like literally the first shot, I don't think I'd even met him yet. And they were like, so this is gonna be the bit where he, you run and then he grabs you and like holds your mouth closed and you're screaming. And I was like, <laughs> this character is obviously not a robot, but there was something like yeah. other about her. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, great, that's kind of my niche at the moment. <laughs> so perfect. Suddenly the OCD side came back and it, like something kind of snapped in my brain and I just had a complete like mental breakdown constantly crying and just a complete like wreck I couldn't function so I didn't see any future for myself because I felt like my life was over really try and push yourself to talk to someone without worrying what they'll think mm -hmm. oh hey by the way your character is like pretty big in it. Your character now is a character, yeah. not, ju not just a number. <laughs> Which is crazy because they, that's something that I didn't know mm -hmm. going into it and having the job for the first time. Like I got up, I was so, so scared and I got up to say my poem and I started saying my poem and mm -hmm. then I just completely froze, got so scared mm -hmm. and I ran off the stage. It's a good question to be honest. <laughs> Um, only good questions at this point. Only good questions, <laughs> guaranteed. Yeah. My name is Andrea Rogozin and this is Beyond Real Talk, a podcast where I invite real entertainment industry professionals and ask them real questions. What are they actually doing? How are they doing it? Why are they doing it? And how can you start doing the same thing? And my today's guest is an actress, a singer, and a songwriter. You might have seen her in Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan, Hannah, uh, The Cursed, and Boiling Point. She's also an author and singer of songs like Places, The One, Miles, Let Me Know, and a lot of wonderful, wonderful covers that you can find on YouTube on her channel. Onya Rose Daily. It's me. Hi Onya, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Um, great, thank you for having me here. Thank you for having me on yes. your podcast. Well, of course, of course, you were one of the first people who actually wrote when I decided like, I want to do a podcast. You were mm. one of the first, I was like, yes, I really want to talk to her because there is a lot of things I want to ask you. Nice. But as always, we start in the beginning, mm -hmm. but we will start even more in the beginning. Okay. Now, let's talk about your name. My name, yes. Because it's a hot topic. It's Onya. <laughs> yes. It's kind of, it's spelled with A, I, and E, right? Yeah. Yes. And A -I -N -E. the A is like, it's not English it's, A, it's like no, with it's a got thingy. an accent. So, yeah. I mean, in I, so it's an Irish name. Mm. Um, and in uh, the Irish language, that's called a fodder. Mm -hmm. um, or an accent, mm -hmm. as as some might say, um, which kind of changes the sound of the A mm -hmm. into like a kind of well, I guess for like an English accent, you can you can say it two ways actually. I mean, mm -hmm. I say it in an English accent as Anya, mm -hmm. um, but you can also say it like Anya, like mm -hmm. so it's more like an A W kind of sound. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I have like in my family, there's like a, anyone who has an English accent in my family does a mix of like some people say Anya and some people say Anya, mm -hmm. but then the Irish accented of us, which yeah. is the, uh, most of my family mm -hmm. would say like Anya. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. So so you're like uh, half Irish. Um, I don't know what the percentage. I'm pretty much like all Irish really. Okay. Mm. So my mum is Irish mm. um, and then my dad, so I was, I grew up in Jersey in the Channel Islands mm -hmm. um, and my dad was born there, um, and but his dad was Irish mm. and then his mum's parents were Irish. I don't actually know if his mum was born in Jersey or, mm. if, or if she moved over when she was young, I'm not sure. Um, so basically everyone is Irish. Mm -hmm. It's just like me and my brother and my dad and his mum that are the people who were in Jersey mm -hmm. and everyone else. Uh, but do you, do, you, do you speak Irish? Oh, I wish. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I wish. Like, <laughs> I don't know how many people speak it now. Um, uh, but uh, it's a very difficult 
yeah. language to learn. I gotta say, I, I knew, like for me, English is difficult sometimes yeah. because especially articles A and B, it's just like you're, you're like sometimes, and it's a huge struggle for yeah. a lot of people who are not like native in English. It's like why it's the V back and why it's, it's so A funny. back, and yeah. there is a rule, and they're like kind of like you kind of understand the rule, but then for example, you know this film, uh, Star is Born, Star mm. was born, like with, yeah. with um, Bradley Cooper, yeah, yeah. And I, I was like, why is A? It's like this particular star is yeah. the star. Yeah, the star. <laughs> Do you know what? It's so funny because I I heard you talk about that on one of your podcasts. And I was like, I've never heard, like, I have so many, like, non-English speaking friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and anytime we talk about languages, I've never heard someone talk about that. And I was like... Then it really made me think, like, mm-hmm. why do I, like, when do I say A and when mm-hmm. do I say V? And I was like, can I describe, like, would I be able to s- describe that to someone? Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, anyways, anyways, let's go back to you. And can you tell me maybe a bit about your childhood and how you went into this creative path? Um, yeah, I do, honestly, it's a good question to be honest. <laughs> Um, only good questions at this point. only good questions <laughs> guaranteed yeah. um, I mean as a child I guess I was really really shy mm-hmm. um, and uh, so I don't really know exactly what made me also want to perform mm-hmm. I think I always like um, I was really obsessed with like movies when I was a child and like that was my favorite thing to do was like you mm. know on the weekend like me and my dad would either go to hmv and get the they always had the deals or it was like five dvds for 20 quid or mm. something like that so we would always go and and get loads of dvds um and then my favorite thing to do was just to sit mm. and watch mm. dvds and then watch all the bonus features on the dvds or like commentary and stuff mm. like that um so I don't know if like that's where it came from because I didn't I w- wasn't very like necessarily like a performer child mm-hmm. really like because I was quite reserved. Um, I guess maybe with my family I was like me and my cousins um, used to do like always put on like little plays for our families and mm-hmm. like um, and we would also like make little movies. Um, so. I guess like I had an interest in it for some reason. And then maybe when I was like, I don't know, like nine, 10, maybe a bit earlier, I'm not sure. I started going to like stage school kind Mm -hmm. of things. Um, I don't really remember too much about the beginning of that. But what I do remember is that it kind of like was a weird thing for me because I really enjoyed acting and performing and singing. But I also was so, such an anxious child and I had really, really bad stage fright. Mm. So it was kind of like... Great combination to have. Yeah, really great combination. So I don't know, yeah, like I, even though I had this really bad stage fright, it wasn't like I didn't want to do it. Like I really wanted to do it, but it just felt like Mm. I was like paralyzed by fear every time I did do it. Is it still the same? Um, Oh! I still get nervous for sure. I don't think I'll ever not get nervous, mm-hmm. but I can, I'm, I can deal with it now. Mm-hmm. Whereas like when I was younger, I had instances where I'd like run off stage because yeah. I, yeah, I did this thing called, um, I don't know if they do it. I don't know where else they do it apart from Wales. Um, maybe they do it in England as well, but we did it in Jersey. It's called the I Stedford. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, It's like kind of uh, a competition thing, but there's loads of different categories. There's, you know, you can do like, um, it's like more acting like scenes or um, you can do like poetry readings Mm -hmm. or they even do like poetry readings in like other languages and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you like basically go to one of the the theatres in Jersey and there's like judges Mm -hmm. um, that watch you and then you get, a certificate at the end you either get like bronze uh silver gold or platinum mm-hmm. um and i was doing a poetry reading i think or maybe like a prose reading or mm-hmm. something um for the i steadford i honestly can't remember how old i was but 
um, I think, I don't know if you did it through school or not. I can't remember, but I know that it was like, all that was in the audience was like the judges. So maybe like three judges and then a class of, I don't know, like 20, 30 kids my age. Um, and I got up, I was so, so scared. And I got up to say my poem and I started saying my poem and then mm. I just completely froze, got so scared mm. and I ran off stage. Oh my God. Um, yeah, terrible. <laughs> um, but it was really nice because one of the judges uh, let me do my reading for her like in a different room so I could still get my nice. certificate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of instances where I was like really, really scared to go on stage. Um, and it was kind of like a battle because I still really wanted to do it. So I was still like putting yeah. myself into these situations, yeah. even though I was like terrified and just like hoping that I'd be able to deal with it. And eventually... I did, but it was a rocky road for sure. Yeah, so, I mean, because honestly, I, I can't imagine, I, I'm still like, I'm a grown up, <laughs> grown up man. I'm still sometimes afraid. I mean, like to a degree. Mm. Uh, I mean, like I, you, you get, you get nervous over time when you perform, especially yeah. like, like on stage, it's like, it's, it's inevitable. It but is. if I would be a kid, I mean, I, I never, did put myself in situations like that when yeah, I was a kid because yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm not sure if I, I have no idea if, if I had a stage fright yeah. when I was young because yeah. I didn't put myself in yeah, position yeah, to, exactly. to get it. So yeah, all right, well, all right. Well, I did for some reason. <laughs> well, then, then the, look, we'll look at you now. Look at me now. And it's funny because um, when I was maybe like, I guess 13 or no. Yeah. Thir I think around 13 in England is where you start picking your, what GCSEs yeah. you want to do. Um, and I was at a school at the time, um, from like year seven onwards. And I really wanted to do drama and like performing arts for mm -hmm. GCSE because I had always, it was always something that I wanted to do. It was always something that I wanted to like pursue. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't really like, like anything else, like as much as that. Um, and I'd had these issues with like my confidence and stage fright and stuff, but I still really wanted to do it. I just knew it was like what I wanted to do. Um, and then I, so I picked my GCSEs and like, you know, you tell the school what you want to do. And then my parents got a letter from the head of the drama department, basically saying that I shouldn't do it um, because of my stage fright and that um, she was worried I would let the other classmates down if I couldn't perform or if oh, I wow. like did something like that. And I was like, That's uh, yeah, I was like destroyed um and at that time it um was uh when you're just before you go to gcse's uh i can't remember what kind of test you do but you do some sort of like test like standardized testing um and anyone who gets um a certain level onwards can go to there's one school in jersey that's just from um, GCSEs onwards so they don't have like the first bit of secondary school and they don't have a primary school it's just GCSEs onwards um, and at that time and that was when people were making the decision to to either stay at the school that they are in now or go to this other school mm -hmm. um, and I I ended up going to the other school and I always thought like I was like I don't really know why I decided to do it I just suddenly like wanted to go to that different school and then my parents sort of like mm -hmm. years later reminded me and they were like Oh, it, no, it was definitely because you got that letter from the head oh, of drama yeah. saying that you couldn't do it mm -hmm. um, or that she didn't want you to do it. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, that makes so much sense. Well, who proved who wrong? Though? Exactly. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. And so let's talk about when did you start singing? Oh, I actually honestly don't know. I mean... <laughs> I feel like it's just something that I've always done. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then I'd always sort of just done it like kind of like, I don't know, in my house, I guess, <laughs> like not really outwardly that much. When I did my first little like stage school, like thing that I went to, mm -hmm. um, there was like some singing involved in that. Mm -hmm. I think maybe my first like 
performance of singing for like public was I can't remember I wish I knew how old I was and I also wish I knew what the song was but mm. it was we were doing songs from Cats the musical mm. <laughs> so that was my first um, yeah. public performance <laughs> um, nice. and then I would do like at school there would be like the kind of I guess not talent shows because it wasn't like someone won it was just I don't know like a showcase of mm. like people doing different things um, and I would do I would like sing at that um and then when, i think it was when i was at school this was like you know youtube was getting to be like a big thing mm-hmm. um and someone one of my classmates was like um oh you should start like doing singing stuff mm-hmm. on youtube and i was like oh i didn't really like ever think of that mm-hmm. but then it was kind of like oh, that's kind of a nice idea because like I can still do like something with my singing, but also I don't have to like sing in front of anyone yeah. apart from yeah. myself and a camera. <laughs> um, and then I started to do that and it sort of like, you know, I mean, it didn't go massive but at the time and from where I was from, like it went like big enough. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, and then... Yeah, that's when I actually started to think like, oh, maybe I'll do something with this. Mm -hmm. And then I think when I was a teenager and sort of like a older teenager, I sort of lost my confidence with everything a little bit and I stopped acting. Um, uh, And I was like, oh, maybe maybe I don't want to do something with acting because I just felt like my I was in a bad place with my mental health and it. I just felt like I couldn't do acting mm-hmm. for some reason, not like ability wise, but just, I didn't, I couldn't be like in front of people or like, I just mm-hmm. couldn't, there was something about it that I just didn't want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, oh, maybe I'll do something in music, maybe not like performing, but mm-hmm. maybe I can do like, you know, something behind the scenes. I got a little bit more into music production at the end of school and I was like oh maybe I'll go and do a music production course at uni so I can like tried that and then didn't like it Mm -hmm. and just then I got a bit better in myself and knew that I wanted to do acting um so the music's always been like there and something that I really like to do but it never quite trumps acting for me mm-hmm. so it's like it which is quite nice in a way because I don't there's not really a lot of stakes in it um with music and I can just do it like the way I want to do it mm-hmm. and just like for the love of doing it mm-hmm. rather than I think anything that makes it feel more like uh, like a career move for me then makes me like not enjoy it as yeah, much yeah, yeah. Yeah. like I think I can I can deal with some of the more like career, like not necessarily nice sides of acting um, because I love it so much. Mm -hmm. I can just like deal with like the other bits that aren't as great. But with music, it's like, I don't know, I like, you know, all the other stuff I just don't care about enough. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I just like to sing songs, Mm -hmm. you know. But uh, what did help you to kind of move past that anxiety that you had? Um, honestly, have probably having a mental breakdown mm. um, <laughs> because you hit rock bottom and then it's like, well, the mm. only way is up, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, like it, I mean, I had bad anxiety all through, I guess like forever really but then it got really bad when I was maybe like 11 Mm -hmm. and um to a point where like I didn't want to be at school like I you know I think the other kids could tell there was something wrong with me Mm -hmm. because I was constantly like um you know if there was any kind of group thing I was always like off to the side or like something was happening with me I was either like talking to teachers like trying to Mm-hmm. get out of it and go home mm-hmm. or I just like um was having a really bad time with like panic attacks and stuff like that um it's such a young age yeah yeah um Stuff. yeah I mean I don't like I'd had I thinking back I definitely had things that like resemble like high anxiety and like mm-hmm. panic before that mm-hmm. like before 11 but 11 was when I 
started having panic attacks and then I like knew that that was what was happening to me. Um, whereas I guess I didn't really know before, um, like what was happening. Um, and yeah. And then it sort of like would get better. Like I would just go through phases where I'd be like, okay for a bit and then it would be bad again. Um, and I'd like take a little bit of time out of school and stuff, not like loads and loads, but like a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. here and there. Um, and then when I was maybe like 15 or 16, there was like a new development in my anxiety, which I'd never really like had before and just sort of developed like without me even kind of noticing. Um, and I started to suffer really bad with OCD and I would do all these like compulsions and stuff like that. Um, and I didn't really pay any attention to it in terms of it being something bad. It was just something that I did. Mm. Um, something that just like happened, like just yeah. something that you live with. Yeah, right exactly. Now. And it just was like, I didn't think that it was a problem really. Mm. Um, it was just like, I. Uh, I don't know, like just the way my brain worked, I think. And then I would do these things to like cope with the way Mm -hmm. way my brain worked. Um, And then when I was about, I think, 17, I, and I don't really know even what triggered it necessarily, um, but my sort of panic anxiety sort of came back, but like, worse than I'd ever had it Mm. before. And um, I basically couldn't, I stopped leaving my house. I couldn't, I dropped out of school. Um, I was doing my A-levels at the time. I think I just (laughs) finished my first year of A-levels. And then I, um, it, it was like the summer after, I think where it really started happening. I was getting like panic attacks all the time. And I, um, like I couldn't, leave my house every time I sort of left my house I just felt like I was about to die Mm -hmm. um and because of that I was also struggling with um eating so I like lost loads of weight and I was just like getting quite sick Mm -hmm. um because of it and then I sort of tried to go back to school for my last year but then I just wasn't well enough so I ended up dropping out um and uh then i slowly slowly started to to get a little bit better um and and then i tried school again the next year i went and like asked if i could try and do the year again to finish my a levels um and i did one term and then i suddenly the OCD side came back and it like something kind of snapped in my brain and I just had a complete like mental breakdown and I was at home all the time like my dad had to stay home from work to to be with me when my mum couldn't be there because I just couldn't function I was just like constantly crying and just a complete like wreck I couldn't function um and that was i'd done like i'd been to see some people like throughout my teenage years and like a bit younger as well for my anxiety but like nothing really like clicked Mm -hmm. that well for me i'd like tried all the kind of like therapies that are out there um and then and then i had this big mental breakdown and that's when we found a therapist that was like OCD specific because at that time I didn't know that that's what I had um and I just thought that I was insane um and then we found this person for me to see and that was kind of like the first step in um in me like getting back to a place where like I felt okay and I could function and then like I could actually maybe think about doing what I wanted to do Mm. in life which was acting because for me with when I had like my OCD is about being a good person and obsessing about things that would make me a bad person 
Mm. And then, so there was a long time in my teenagers where I felt like I was the worst person in the world and I fully believed it. And the thought of being in front of someone and performing and and also knowing what was going on inside my head was like, it gave me such a massive amount of guilt that I was like, I can't, well, um, I don't want to do that because I don't deserve to be like looked at. I don't deserve to be, you know, uh, mm. I don't, that's like not something that can happen. Mm. Um, but obviously then I went, I was 19. I had this mental breakdown. I started seeing a therapist who actually taught me about OCD for the first time mm -hmm. because it was still in Jersey. Yeah. yeah um, because up until that point, I didn't really know that, that could be OCD because you just think of it as like, you know, more got to do with like germs and stuff like that. Like that's, mm -hmm. I guess the mainstream idea of what yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, I have that a tiny bit, but not, I, I would say that that's not even like necessarily properly my OCD. That's mm -hmm. just like normal, not liking germs, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but not even in an extreme way. There's so many yeah. other people that like them way less than me. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so that was a big like turning point for me because I then learned that I'm not crazy mm -hmm. um, and that what I'm experiencing is something that loads of other people have experienced mm -hmm. and it's not actually me as a person and it's this thing that's happening mm -hmm. that, that has developed because of anxiety and blah, blah, blah. I can't even imagine to be fair, like what kind of uh relief it must be to realize mm. something like that when you think that something is very very wrong with you and you're the only one like that it's, yeah definitely it's... because you feel like before you know that you feel like your life was over that's what i felt i didn't see any future for myself because i felt like my life was over um i couldn't like all i could do was just no i couldn't function like i couldn't mm -hmm. see life moving past where I was. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go to uh, someone and you learn about this thing and it's suddenly like, oh my God, my life isn't over. Like mm -hmm. I, you know, I can still move on from here, um, which is a great feeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's hard, like it takes a long time to, um, to get back from that mm -hmm. place, but um, I, you know, I started seeing her in Jersey and then I moved over to London sort of by accident um, because of my anxiety as well, because I came over here um, to visit my boyfriend at the time. And then I, my anxiety was so bad that I couldn't get, do the traveling back to Jersey. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of like, at that time I was kind of toying with the idea of moving over here anyway and going and doing this music course, because mm -hmm. I was still like thinking like, oh, acting, I can't do it. Um, but then I couldn't get back to Jersey because my anxiety was so bad. I just couldn't, I didn't want to get on the plane. Like I um, couldn't do it. So then I ended up staying here mm -hmm. and that's how I moved here basically. <laughs> Um, but then I, so the, the therapist that I was seeing in Jersey referred me to someone over here. Mm -hmm. And that was my therapist that I saw for like a good, maybe two, two years, I think of going like every week. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it sort of like trickled off after that. Um, and yeah, it was a long road of like trying of like getting to a point where I can like live with. Mm -hmm. it now um and it's just very much in the the background most of the time mm -hmm. sometimes it like flares up and i feel like oh i'm a bit like consumed by it again but i know that it's not that's not gonna last and because, you do you know how to kind of yeah, deal with it mentally, yeah right? yeah i know how to deal with it and even if i'm not dealing with it well i'm i because I know so much about it now, it's like, it's not the same as it was. Mm -hmm. I can't be like completely sucked in because there's still that element of me that really knows mm -hmm. exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, uh, and so as I was getting better with all that stuff, then I got to a point where I was like, oh, I, I feel like free and 
like myself again to a point where I can actually consider doing what I want to do with mm-hmm. my life, which is acting. Um, yeah, so I chucked music production out the window um, and decided to give it a go. Yeah. Basically. Well, I'm, I'm glad that, that that story ended like this. Yeah. It's <laughs> a happy glad, ending. I'm glad that you, yeah, you, you found the right purpose and like you figure out what's happening. Uh, what would be your advice if someone listens to this who mm. has like going through the same thing? What would be your advice? I mean, I would definitely say like, yeah, going to therapy saved me for sure. Um, I, my personal like journey with it is that I started going to therapy and then like I was struggling to um, take in the information because I was so in such a bad place mentally. Mm -hmm. Um, So then I ended up going on medication as well to get me out of my, for like my dark space. (laughs) Um, And then for me it was the combination of that and then going to therapy that helped me get out of it and now i'm off my medication and i just go to therapy like as and when i need it um but yeah definitely i think the most important thing is to talk like really try and push yourself to talk to someone without worrying what they'll think Mm -hmm. um whether that be like someone that you trust but like uh, like as a friend or um you know a professional i would definitely suggest um because you don't always know like how uh, like unless you know the person really well you don't always know how someone's going to react to to what you're going to say um but for me like the biggest part was that i had a lot of shame about um speaking to someone because mm-hmm. i didn't think that it was i didn't know that it was normal mm-hmm. and i thought that there was something very very wrong mm-hmm. in my head um and my advice would just be even if you think that and you think that you're going to say something and and someone's going to like f- shame you for it do it anyway because they won't yeah, I don't. And if they do, then that's, that's, that, not, that's not, their problem. That's not a person that's that not, you want in your life. Yeah, that's not fair. a person yeah. you want in your life, and that's their problem, and it's not anything hmm. bad got to do with you. Yeah. So yes, seek help because I sought help yeah. finally, <laughs> and then I got help, and now I can live a normal life where I thought I really, really thought, and I can't stress enough for like anyone who is in that situation i did not think that i could survive any of this but i did and so if you don't think you can survive like if even if you're convinced that you can't it's possible you can just talk to someone talk to someone talk you you have people who love you Mm. probably most of the time it's parents they will do so many things yes, for you. Yes, they will. So talk to someone. Yeah, for sure. All right. I'm glad that we passed that. Mm. Let's go to acting then. Yes. <laughs> so uh, where did you study acting? Um, is it the identity? It is identity. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I I sort of picked up acting after a good few years of not really doing it. Mm-hmm. And so I felt very like, new to it mm. all again and um i was just trying to like i don't know feel my way through it and see what worked and i i was like oh I, maybe i'll apply for some degree courses and like go to drama school I didn't get into any of them mm-hmm. um glad because i feel like i was not at that point in the place where i would have been able to deal with drama school mm-hmm. because i was dealing so much with like other things with, and like with your drama yeah with my drama <laughs> i didn't need any more <laughs> um and then i applied for identity because i was like that's great mm-hmm. i it's part time so i can do other things i can like have another job you know i can um it's not like consuming my whole life so it's a nice ease back into mm-hmm. it um and it was like more focused on screen which i wanted to do anyway um mm. well lucky you i gotta, I gotta say because i've been how long have you been in, in identity 
Oh God. I mean, I started, I went there from, I think 2016. And then I think I went there on and off from 2016 to 2018 or beginning of 2019. I'm mm-hmm. not sure. Mm-hmm. I think end of 2018. Um, and mm. yeah, I, it was actually just very fortunate timing for when I was at the school because um, I got in, which was great. Um, and I did it and it was nice and it was fun. Um, and I was enjoying doing acting. And then when I was at the school, that was when they had opened, they had just opened their um, IDSA talent branch, which is like yeah. the the smaller branch of the agency. Yeah. And so obviously like in the school, they were doing agency labs anyway, where the, the IAG agents would come and like see your class and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And like invite people for reads and stuff like that, or watch your showcase and invite people for reads. Um, but I never did an agency lab or anything, or, um, I think I did like maybe one or two showcases, um, before this. And then they opened up this new branch of the agency and it was just for like, you know, smaller parts or like music videos and stuff like that. And because it was new, they basically said anyone who's in, because it was like a tiered system and an identity. So anyone who was in the semi-professional or professional group. So I think I was in semi-professional at the time can just email us, say you want to be on the agency and we'll take you on because it was new. So yeah. great. I emailed mm-hmm. then I was part of the agency. Yeah. Are you still with them? Yeah. So I'm with IAG. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, I then joined that agency, um, had Ade as my agent and, um, I went up for like a few small things. Um, and I was like, oh, you know, I was very much because I was so still so like new coming into acting again mm-hmm. after all this time, I felt very like, I felt quite chill about it. And I was just like excited mm-hmm. to like do auditions. I didn't even think about like, what if I got the part or whatever? Yeah. Like I was just like excited to be involved in some way mm-hmm. um, in the industry because I loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had an audition for a Lily Allen music video and I ended up getting the part for mm-hmm. that where I played the young version of Lily Allen. So that was my first like <laughs> professional acting job. Mm. Um, and you know, it was fun and it was exciting and I had to dye my hair brown. Don't, Hey, this is also my advice to people. If you're blonde, don't dye your hair brown for a role unless you really want to have brown hair. Because (laughs) at the time I was like, I'll do anything to like, you know, like, I don't care. It's just hair, whatever. Um, I was just excited to, I like wanted to have the role, you know, Mm. um, yeah, it was really bad time for my hair, to be honest. Wow. Um, it didn't last long. I, I didn't, it wasn't awful, but um, I just don't think I'm, I've always been blonde um, and it just feels more like myself. Mm-hmm. And so then I had to dye my hair black, back yeah. to blonde and then it got all damaged and it was yeah. just really Why bad didn't they time. give you a wig? Well, the thing is they got, gave me a wig for one. So basically I played her at two stages. I played her at, like when she was a teenager. Mm-hmm. And then I played her when she was like in her like famous era um, with the like fringe, like like almost black hair. So for that, they gave me a wig, mm-hmm. but then they wanted me, I don't know why they wanted me to not have a wig for the other stage, but they just didn't, I don't know. I was young. <laughs> because wig I was is expensive and you I, Yeah, your exactly. Parents. There was probably yeah. not that much budget. I don't know. Mm. Um, but I did it anyway. Um, no, I mean, like, on Sanderson, I would, I would, I would too. Yeah, exactly. But now, as an adult mm-hmm. and having learned my lesson, mm-hmm. I wouldn't do that again. Yeah. Um, and I'd ask for a wig. So, unless they pay, you, unless but, they pay me yeah. like loads and loads of money, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um, anyway, I did that video, super mm-hmm. fun. Um, yeah, it was my first time, you know, like being on a 
set yeah. where I was being paid to be there. And you were still studying in identity at yeah, the time? Yeah. 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 How, like, what was your experience at the identity? Because when you said, like, well, it was more screen acting. Hmm. I have been in identity for, I think, a year. Yeah, I think I think it did a year. Hmm. And I only had screen acting with Lee Lomas, who yeah. uh, like we, we, yeah. where we met at Lee's class. Yeah. And working at the studio. I only had screen acting for, like, three, four weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I, I think I was quite lucky. I had a couple of terms where I did quite a bit of screen acting. I think it just depends on like, like when you were there, mm-hmm. really. Like I was, I was lucky with like all the teachers I got mm-hmm. were pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and there wasn't, it wasn't completely all screen acting, but mm-hmm. I think because there was still like, there was still a kind of, acknowledgement I guess of that's where most people wanted to go into because the of the agency mm-hmm. like it they pushed a lot for I guess like screen jobs and I guess so yeah. I think even if some of the classes weren't necessarily like screen focused I think we all knew like teachers and students knew that that's kind of where most of us wanted to go mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. um so there was that mm-hmm. knowing there, and I think. No, I think just just in general identity. Like uh, I spoke to Matt about it as well during mm. our podcast. Uh, a lot of people have the experience that like not everything was perfect. I think that the structure wasn't there for mm. for a lot of people. But at the same time, I enjoyed my time in identity a lot. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, when I decided like it's time for me to move on, mm. I also enjoy the time of moving on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And that's the same with like everything, you know, like I had a great time there, I really did. Mm. Um, um, I met like some of my best friends there mm-hmm. um, and I had really, really great teachers. Um, but yeah, and then... And then you reach a point and you're ready to yeah to move yeah. on. But they they didn't uh, take me on uh, like in their I mean they t- took me for uh, commercial uh, agency, yeah. uh, but that wasn't good enough for them for you know for a proper one. But to be fair, uh, looking back now, it's kind of like I really wasn't <laughs> I wasn't good enough. But the thing is as well is that like I think for me it was very like the timing of everything was weird because like it was very fortunate um and i don't know if if that same set of circumstances were there i don't know if i would have been signed on to the agency or not i don't know but the thing is like um the thing is being signed with the agency doesn't guarantee you anything no, and you're actually not. booking very very big and good exactly. projects so it's not only about the time maybe time can kind of help you out a little bit but if you would get to some different agency mm. i think you would still book you would still book good roles just because you're good i mean hopefully <laughs> <laughs> but it just sort of worked out because i did that that music video and then i had like a few more auditions mm. and then through IDSA Talent, who I was still with, the audition for Hannah came up because mm-hmm. at the time it was, you know, it was still season one and the role that I was going up for was very small. No, um, yeah, I remember because like you were through the whole season there, but it was like all, like you almost didn't have any line. Did yeah, so no, even in season one, I was only in the second, the Two, oh, two. Se- episodes seven and eight, the last yeah. two episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was, yeah, like maybe a few lines. It was mm. so it was like a bit part kind mm. of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that audition came up and it just was like really like lucky because it was the the character that they wanted was like a thing that was kind of like, I guess, what I was good at at the time because mm-hmm. it was that she was meant to be quite like, you know, I was going up for a lot of like kind of weird and like ethereal kind of mm. like parts. And that was kind of what I was doing well at that time. And this character was obviously not a robot, but there was something like yeah. other about her. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, great, that's kind of my niche at the moment. <laughs> so perfect. Um, and then I ended up getting that part and that was like, amazing because that was what what did it feel like i don't even it was just amazing like it was so cool Mm -hmm. it was just so cool like i couldn't believe it Mm -hmm. because again i was still like 
I'd only sort of in the last, so this was in, I got it in 2018. So in the last two years decided to like think about acting again. And so I was very much still like, oh, you know, I was very much still like feeling just lucky to be doing acting. Um, So then suddenly this role comes along and then I get this part and I'm like, this is mental. I mean, like it's something that I never thought would Mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. And then it's happening. Yeah. Um, And yeah, it was, it was really great. And I ended up going to Budapest that summer to film Mm -hmm. for those like two, like, I don't know, like three or four scenes that Mm -hmm. I had. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and then it sort of ends and that's your first like job and you've been on this like big professional set. It's like Amazon, it's like big yes. studio. And then there it like ends the, and there then are you're some, like- some big names there. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. And then you come back home and you're like, did that happen? Yeah, like, back, back to your muggle. Yeah, <laughs> muggle exactly, life, right? exactly. And you're like, wow. And then I convinced myself as well that I was going to get cut out of the show for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Like uh, in my head, I was like, I was like, I'm not put, getting my hopes up because it's a small part. So potentially I'm going to watch the show and I'm not going to be there and that's <sighs> fine. Um, and yeah, I just went back to my normal life. Mm. Uh, and then, and then yeah, the show comes out. I'm not cut, mm. which is great. Um, it was fun to, to mm. see. Mm. Um, and then I ended up getting, and then from then on, it just sort of like, slowly parts here and there were coming up. So I got the thing in Jack Ryan, Mm -hmm. which was like so cool because um, I got to act with John Krasinski, who was probably one of my favorite actors, uh, like ever for a long time. (laughs) Because of The Office? (laughs) Yeah, because of The Office. And even before I saw The Office, he was in a bunch of like, really like, no offense, John, but like Mm -hmm. just, like B rom B movie rom coms yeah, yeah. that I just loved as yeah, a kid of course, because you of just you know you you just see all those mm-hmm. um, and that was like a good era for a rom com mm-hmm. was when I was a kid Which and is, it's dead now isn't oh it? oh my god <laughs> Andre it's so sad because I mean like obviously some rom coms are just so shit but yeah. there is a certain element to it that's also great. And it's like really like, I know. for me, it's like comforting, so comforting to watch. Yeah. And it honestly, I was talking to my friend about this the other mm-hmm. day because we went to see the new rom-com with Sydney Sweeney. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just came out of it and I was like, the rom-com is dead. Yeah. No, they, it can't be done anymore. It can't be done anymore because they. the thing is with a rom-com, you have to get the right amount of like, it's cringy, but in a fun way. Yes. But now they seem to be only only be able to do it where it's cringy in an actual cringy way where you're watching it and you're a bit like, oh, like this is not. Or it goes to a completely different different path. This leads to cynical. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. Yeah, I know, I know. That's why I I still kind of my one of my most favorite films of all times is Love Actually, which is not like a rom com rom com, but it's like it's, it's a very very feel good. Yeah, film. yeah, exactly. It's the it's got that rom com vibe yeah. for sure, and yeah. it just for yeah. some reason cannot be done anymore. Uh, yeah, I I agree. I mean. Maybe some series. I don't know, but Maybe. no, I don't know. Like I can't, like I can't remember anything because, like, you can't serialize a rom com because mm. it's like it has a beginning and kind of exactly. an end. Otherwise, like, there, we like happily ever after. Yeah, is not that interesting anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what it would because obviously a lot of them are like outdated and stuff now. But I don't think it's impossible look I'm, just... I'm, I'm a 40 years old divorced man <laughs> and i still sometimes kind of sometimes i have a feeling like i want ice cream and some exactly. cringe, cringe exactly you need that sometimes yeah, and it's yeah. just like they can't do it i don't yeah. know maybe it'll come back one day maybe maybe we should do one maybe you know what? yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what we need to do we need to bring the rom-com, a rom-com back or a horror film I yeah think horror film is kind of 
it might be a bit a bit more expensive to film, but yeah. it's still kind of cheap. But I think you will get more money from from horror films. I from, think from, so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, so uh, so how was working with uh, with Krasinski? It was great, and um, I really was thrown in the deep end because I was like so starstruck, and I'm one of those people yeah. who I can't. Um, when there's someone that I like admire, I don't really get starstruck mm -hmm. that much, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, but mm -hmm. he's probably like one of the only people who I probably would get starstruck with mm -hmm. because I did just watch him mm -hmm. so much growing up. Um, and then obviously I'm obsessed with The Office. So um, yeah, it was a lot to, to mm -hmm. handle. And yeah, I'm one of those people who I can't, it, I interact with anyone who I who I admire. Yeah. So I'm not one of those people who will be like, oh, hi, you know, I just really want to say I like you in this and, you know, I think you're great, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Can't do it. No. Yeah. As soon as there's someone that I like that's around me, I'm immediately like, I don't know that they exist. Mm. Um, I'm just pretending this isn't happening. Well, I, I gotta <laughs> say, because when I was watching um, Jack Ryan, I actually didn't know that you were in it. Yeah. And really? I was like, I was like, oh, there it's Oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you were, I think you were very good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think you were good. <laughs> um, I was star sorry. Yeah, like, I know. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I felt so thrown in at the deep end yeah. in that respect because the first day I was filming with him, it was none of the like talking scenes and it was only like literally the first shot. I don't think I'd even met him yet. And they were like, so this is going to be the bit where he you run and then he grabs you and like holds your mouth closed and you're screaming. And I was like, this is be my first interaction with him. Um, so it just felt very overwhelming to be honest yeah. um but he was really nice really lovely mm -hmm. um and it was a great experience mm. nice yeah nice. and then yeah and then suddenly um the next year hannah's been renewed for season two yeah i you know i don't know anything about it for ages and then we get to the actual stage where they're prepping for the show and they're like, oh, hey, by the way, your character is like pretty big in it now. Your character now is a character, yeah. not, ju not just a number. <laughs> Which is crazy because they that's something that I didn't know mm -hmm. going into it and having the job for the first time like and doing the first season. I had no idea. Like, mm -hmm. And even till very far up until like when when season two was about to commence, I mm -hmm. did not know that this was happening. Did, did, did you know that you are coming back uh, in general or not? I honestly can't remember. Mm -hmm. I either didn't or I did, but like, I had no idea. Like, I just assumed that it would be the same as season mm -hmm. one. Like, it, you know, it wasn't mm -hmm. a big thing. Yeah, but just then, a silent creep somewhere. Yeah, there. exactly. And then suddenly... They're like, oh no, you have a full storyline, um, loads of scenes. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, uh, cool, I guess. So I'm actually in a show now, yeah. like, I guess. That's what it feels like. Uh, well, when they told you, were you more kind of surprised, happy or surprised, scared? Because well, I, I'm guessing like when you're getting a like, more juicy part, like mm. in a big production like that, and it's like you're not that experienced. Mm. I think it might be a bit like overwhelming as well. Like, oh my God, will it be? Yeah. I think I felt that when I was, when I started filming. Mm -hmm. So up until filming, I was just like, this is so exciting. Fun, mm -hmm. fun, fun. And then you sort of get to filming and that's when you realize like how inexperienced mm -hmm. you are. And you're like, fuck, I don't know if I can do this. Um, but it was really, really fun. And um, there were so many great people mm -hmm. that I was working with that that made it not feel mm -hmm. like super, super scary. Um, and I think there were so many people on it that were like, you know, because it was a lot of girls who were my age. There was a lot of us who were just like excited to be there. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. like made the vibe quite nice. Mm -hmm. um, how, how long did you film the second season? Mm, so I think it was six months. Six um, months? Yeah, yeah. Like all, all the time? Or um, on and off? I was on and off. So like, it was like, 
a decent enough like amount like mm-hmm. I was working quite a lot but I did have I wasn't all the time like I would have like a, a week here and a week there where I'd be off and then sometimes the weeks where I was filming it would only be like two or three times a week mm-hmm. um so I did have quite a lot of time off as well because in season three I think you were like you you had even more time right season three was weird because um I can't remember exactly how much time I was filming I think it was a six month shoot again or maybe a little bit less Mm. um because there was less episodes um but I the the weird thing was season three was that the first half was in England um and then the second half was in Prague but this was in we started filming at the end of 2020 So it was COVID times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, obviously, like, the English stuff was kind of, like, fine because we were all here anyway. Um, but then, basically, we all had to go out to Prague for the whole three months, mm-hmm. even if we weren't. There was a lot of time, like, of course, a lot yeah. of time where I wasn't filming. But because we couldn't travel back and forth um, because of COVID, we were just all out there for... Mm-hmm for like the whole time so it kind of like felt like it was full on when it wasn't really because i was off a lot of the time but then i was off Mm. in a different city that was completely shut yeah so it was a weird um kind of a weird combination so what what were your lessons from i don't know season two for example when you were like for the first time such a big project for kind of long period of time Mm. anything that actors need to know um is it like a marathon yeah for sure it's hard it is i mean obviously i say it's hard i'm very much of the mindset of people where i'm like hey we're acting it's hard to an extent (laughs) but there are a lot of people doing a lot harder work than we are that's a fact um but acting still can be hard yeah exactly exactly and it's It is tough. Um, yeah, it's it is like a marathon of sorts. Like it's it's long and the hours are long. And for that season as well, it was a bit annoying because we were filming in Reading or like near Reading, mm-hmm. but we weren't staying near there. We're like it, it, everyone who was in like London was like just living at home Mm -hmm. so it was long days but then you were also traveling two hours to get there and two hours to get home as well yeah which is which was that was like I think one of the hardest elements Mm -hmm. for it because um because you know filming days can be quite long and then you have the travel there and back and so the when you are filming you really don't have a life at all mm-hmm. like that that's your life yeah, yeah, yeah. um and for a lot of jobs i think that's pretty much like unless you're like a smaller character or um like like for me it wasn't so bad because there was still a lot of scenes that i wasn't in so i had even though when I was filming, it was full on, I then had maybe like a week off or like my, I only had half a week of filming or something like that. If like, you know, you're a bigger character, then be prepared to just not have a life because mm. yeah. It's yeah, it makes sense. kind of impossible. How much time did you have to learn your scripts? Uh, did they change a lot during the shoot or um, like in how, how much time do you have before? They definitely- there was a lot of like amendments but it wasn't anything major so nothing like for me for my part anyway i'm not sure about like other people's parts but for yeah. my part there was not like massive things that i'd have to like go back and relearn oh, i can't remember if it was season two or season three now but i think season two um the when you start filming you don't have all of the scripts for the whole yeah. series so um you don't actually know where your character is going Mm -hmm. really and it's Mm -hmm. funny because my character takes a bit of a turn Mm -hmm. um in the show not spoiling anything but there was a lot of people obviously on the production side who knew that and i didn't Mm -hmm. and so like we'd be kind of like anytime we'd be passing by or like chatting or whatever they're like you know 
it gets a bit crazy for you. And I'm like, I don't know. I'd love to know, but I don't have the script. Um, so I was like, okay, something big is happening with my character, but I mm-hmm. don't know what it is, which is quite weird. Sometimes you feel like you want to know what journey you have why, to go on. Why didn't on. they give you the script? Why didn't they tell because, you? Because... Um, they're not finished yet, okay. basically. And like things aren't signed off. Mm-hmm. So um, you get maybe like the first, I think we got them in blocks. So mm-hmm. we, um, we had like the block one scripts and then the block two So they scripts. are basically still uh, kept writing them while they were shooting the yeah. season. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how much was already set in stone mm-hmm. when it started, mm-hmm. but um, th- we definitely, you know, like didn't get the scripts until like later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's kind of like a weird thing about it because you think, oh, I want to maybe I want to know what journey I have to go on to get to this mm-hmm. certain mm-hmm. place. But mm-hmm. You don't know the place that you're getting to, so you just got to hope that you're doing the right thing with yeah, the. Yeah, I'm in the middle of it at the same time. The character doesn't know. It as that's well. the so thing as well. Way, they like, don't know, so yeah. you know, yeah, you well. figure out a way yeah. to make it work. It's really, really fun, but also does take a lot out of you mm. i'd say uh did they did you do some firearms training during the filming or before season one actually we did some yeah. um i don't think i even had any scenes with i, I honestly I, right now i don't remember no. I, i'm not sure in season sure. one no, no but so. still we did the training so mm-hmm. me and yasmin who played clara um in budapest we um got taken to a shooting range and Mm -hmm. um did some shooting there and then did some like more like tactical stuff Mm -hmm. um which was really fun Mm -hmm. and then that just got intensified as the seasons went on so season two we did quite a lot of stunt training Mm -hmm. so we were in whenever we weren't filming and i think we started maybe like a month before mm-hmm. we started filming as well um so there was a lot of stunt stuff um in season two and then in season three we did um more just like an intensive week or two weeks at, before we started filming and then we didn't really do too much i did a few bits um here and there in season three but it was a bit less than season two i think mm-hmm. Yeah, which was all really, really fun and also something that I never imagined that I would do. Mm-hmm. But now that I've done it, it was super fun and I would love to do it again. Okay, so you finished with, with uh, Hannah. Mm-hmm. Three seasons. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I told you before, do you know the producers? Yes. We need to write them an email mm-hmm. or call them yeah. or invite them to the podcast mm-hmm. <laughs> and tell them that I think there should be a spin-off about Sandy because uh, if you haven't seen it tiny little spoiler maybe <laughs> well you know no no spoilers no spoilers okay, okay. but we don't really know what happened to her in the end I guess I guess yeah. and, and she's a survivor she's a survivor All right she really she's is she's crappy yeah she could you know I think she could come back and i think it could be like a story of redemption yeah of sandy yeah who discovers the world yeah discovers that she was lied to all the time mm-hmm. and she is not a bad person in general she was just a bit jealous mm. <laughs> she, she was just a bit jealous <laughs> she just tried she to kill her bad yeah well it's like well she was a product of her environment right she was a product of her environment Honestly, there is a world in which I think that could exist. Yeah. I would love that. It would be yeah. so fun. I think you could kind of like you would be a lead. It would be great. Yes. And I think we should do it. I think we should do it. I bring Sandy back. Ha- hashtag hashtag bring Sandy. Bring Sandy back. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, yeah, I think I think there were um I think because of the ending that my character had, there was a lot of like fun with the producers being like oh but what if this oh but what is that you never know (laughs) i think i think i think it's a valid uh, because it's it's pretty successful series right yeah yeah i think so so and i'm pretty sure you have a huge army of fans who love sandy yes definitely no any weird ones (laughs) there's always weird ones i'm just curious i'm just curious like because uh at some point if you get in a product like that mm-hmm. you know and there suddenly you have like huge following on instagram and all that like there should be some creeps of course there's always some creeps there is always some creeps <laughs> how are you However, doing that? 
Well, the good thing about Instagram is that um, message requests, mm. you can just delete those requests. Yes. Um, because sometimes people will message you things that don't deserve a reply. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I delete everyone. Mm. I have some lovely fans mm. who I speak to. Yeah. Um, and it's really nice. Shout out to them. Mm. Um, but there are a lot of people who will message you wild yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, and I do like to take take screenshots of the weirder messages to send to my friends because it's like, can you believe someone wrote this down and then decided to press send mm -hmm. to a stranger? So if you're doing this to anyone, mm. just just think about it. Yeah. Someone, there is a group of people who who's looking at your message and they're mm. laughing. About yeah, it. So exactly. Don't do it. So think about what you've done. Yeah. <laughs> Think if you would send this message to your mother. Exactly. And if you wouldn't, then I don't want it, basically. Yeah. And if you would, then still, you know. Yeah. Then, yeah. Then I don't want it as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. And uh, how did you get to Boiling Point? Well, I guess just the normal way. I mean... Um, my agent sent me the self-tape through. I feel like everyone I knew at the time mm -hmm. had that same self-tape. I think one of my best friends had it, um, but she was going for a different character, I think. Um, and the, the thing, it was not a normal self-tape because there was not a scene that you had to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and the brief was to tell a story to the camera um, of either a really, really good or really, really bad restaurant experience mm. um, while you're making a cup of tea. Interesting. So that was the self-tape. And at the time, I don't think, maybe I just didn't go to restaurants that much. I don't know, mm. but I had no stories. So I was like, I asked people mm -hmm. like what they had. And I think I even, I'm not 100% sure because I can't even remember the story now, but I think I used a story from Demi <laughs> that she sent me um as my story mm -hmm. because i didn't have any i didn't yeah. have any like weird i don't i didn't i guess go out to restaurants that much i didn't have any ma yeah. major experiences mm -hmm. i wish i remember what the story was now maybe i'll ask demi because i'm sure it was her that i i used her one mm -hmm. um and then yeah so i sent the tape and i did it while i was making a cup of tea i mm -hmm. did it in my brother's room and brought mm -hmm. the kettle up um and then sent it off and i remember thinking that was a really terrible tape yeah i'm like honestly like and i'm not just saying this but i did tell people i was like i did a really awful tape mm. um i don't want to watch it again i'm never hearing from that again mm -hmm. so that's that um yeah. well i did hear back mm -hmm. and they wanted me for a recall and i was like why that's weird <laughs> why because that was bad i'm sure of it mm. but i guess you just don't know like you can't be i guess completely objective mm -hmm. when, when you um when you're doing your own tapes um and then i went in for the recall um and that was when i went into the room and i like met the people and i felt like i was very much in line with like what they wanted for the character mm -hmm. so after the recall i felt like oh no maybe i do have a chance of getting this because i just feel like it was kind of like the same as hannah where it just felt like um it was very much like i know i'm in this niche of mm -hmm. what they want mm -hmm. um so i thought maybe there was a good chance like mm -hmm. it felt like it went well like i you know the people were super nice yeah. um and i just felt like I knew what they wanted from the character, mm. uh, which you don't a lot. Like, I feel like I do a lot of auditions and I feel a bit like, I don't, you know, I just don't know what you want. Or like, I'm doing something and they, yeah. I'm I'm like, oh, you want something completely different that mm. I cannot give you. Yeah. And then, yeah, got the call, booked the job, mm. really exciting. Also kind of, not nerve wracking, but like, there, it was exciting in a different way because it was completely different to, it wasn't like going into a normal filming experience because it was a one take. That's what, what I wanted to talk to you about because uh, if you haven't seen Boiling Point, uh, there is, first of all, there's feature film, the first one, and mm -hmm. then there's also series. Series mm -hmm. are not one shot. <laughs> no. And there's uh, also a short film that came before the feature oh, really? film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like, they did the short film with Steve Graham. Yeah, yeah, I mean, 
I don't know if they even were going for proof of concept. Mm-hmm. It was more like, um, I think Phil, the director, wanted mm-hmm. to, to make a short because he wanted mm-hmm. to get into directing. He'd done mm-hmm. one short and then I think he needed to like get an agent mm-hmm. or something. So mm-hmm. he was like, um, oh, I'm going to make this other short. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they planned to do it into a feature mm-hmm. at that point, but they did it and Stephen was in it and it was like 20 minutes, I think. And then it did really well in mm-hmm. festivals yeah. and that's how it then developed into this feature. Mm. Um, and yeah, so it was completely different, like nothing that I had ever experienced before um, uh, going into a set. Um, How, first of all, if you haven't seen it, you go and see it because it's like, and here's my experience. I have to, <laughs> have to confess. Mm. I knew that we will do a podcast with you for probably already like a month yeah. or so. Yeah. And I still haven't watched it uh, <laughs> until yesterday uh, because I was busy. I was doing other things. I was, but the thing is, like, I, was, I wanted to watch it a long time ago. Mm. And I still haven't got to it until yesterday. And yesterday I watched it, like the, the actual film mm-hmm. and one and a half or almost two episodes of a uh, uh, show. And they, so then I... I fell asleep. Yeah. Because fair. it was like around 3 a.m. Yeah. I had to get up at 6 30. You got to sleep, you know? Uh, and I was watching a film yesterday. And I'm not trying to, you know, blow smoke, <laughs> smoke up your ass or whatever. I honestly, I wanted to cry sometimes <laughs> because of how good it was. And not at places where you're supposed to cry mm. because it's a sad moment. Yeah. Just because I was watching some scenes, I was like, it's so good that I want to cry. Oh, honestly, because I think it's it's amazing. It is good film. It's uh, good film. How did he? Because it was a real one shot, or there were like some some. No, like, real one so shot. So it's a film, like whole film, like one and a half hour long. I think. Yeah, yeah it's like it's not too long. Watch it, and it's great. And it's one shot, yeah. basically. Camera follows characters all the time. Yeah. How long did you rehearse it? I think, if I remember correctly, we had two weeks where different sections of us, I think we were all there for both of the weeks, or maybe it was the front of house staff were in for the two weeks in the kitchen were in one week with us. And then they did like training another week. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was two weeks where we had to basically be in the restaurant that we were filming at mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and rehearse it all basically. And we'd do it in sort of like sections. So they'd break up the script and we'd focus on this section with these characters Mm -hmm. and the rest of us would just do whatever if we weren't doing rehearsals. And then once we'd done all the sections, then we sort of started to like stitch them together Mm -hmm. and start running it through fully. But yeah, it was about two weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. Like almost every day yeah Monday yeah. to Friday I'm pretty sure uh, and how how long did it take it like every day like a full I think day so work? just a full yeah. full working day mm-hmm. of as far as I can remember um no but I like it yeah it sounds sounds about right because yeah. it's 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 a lot like mm. there is a lot of logistics a lot of lots of movement like how camera goes around exactly uh, I, I, I was curious about. about like about the lighting was there any additional lighting where like some people go like running around with the lights or it was just all kind of light from from the actual restaurant i actually can't remember i think it was all lights from the actual restaurant mm-hmm. But I can't remember. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, because you know, like when when people shoot a scene and you shoot like for different angles, yeah. like and yeah. f- for for every angle, like the lighting changes all the yeah, time. Like yeah, there is yeah. for one person here, another there, and there are like few few people standing around yeah, you with like reflectors exactly. and everything. Yeah. And here, just like whole restaurant. But yeah, because I, I was watching, I, I was thinking like it looks like because it's darker than usual, yeah. film, of course, yeah. right? Because yeah. it's it's actual restaurant. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, it looked amazing. So two weeks. Of yeah, yeah yeah and then so more kind of wild stuff happening around that time was we filmed this in march 2020 mm-hmm. i don't know if anyone can remember what happened at that stage in <laughs> right um but basically we did our two weeks of rehearsal 
Um, there's murmurings of things going on, but yeah. everything's fine. There's a few signs up saying to wash your hands. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were supposed to do four days of filming and do two takes of the film per day. So we'd end up with eight takes and then we'd choose the best one. Mm-hmm. Um, we So you, you shot the same film a few times. Well, we <laughs> did. We were meant to do it eight times. Yeah. However, because of the bad thing that yeah. happened, yeah. Um, we only, we had to shut down after two days. Yeah. So we did... The first day we did two takes, then we did the second day. And I think going into it, it was kind of like, we have to get it today Mm -hmm. because every other production is shutting down. Mm -hmm. We have to shut down. So we have to get the film today. (laughs) Um, Luckily, we did two pretty good takes Mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. Um, The film is the third take. Mm -hmm. um, And... It was kind of, there was a bit of a debate going on about whether it was going to be the third or the fourth take that was going to be the film because the actors, most of the actors anyway, wanted take three, mm-hmm. which is the take that we got. Mm-hmm. Um, and most of the crew wanted to take four because there was less technical mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is, at the end of the day, the energy just wasn't there as much acting wise in yeah. the fourth take. Um because we like felt like we kind of smashed the third one and there was like, it was really good energy. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of hard to, to do so that again. Are you telling me that there are like three more versions of this film somewhere, somewhere on the hard drive that no one had seen apart from the crew? I guess so, yeah. Yeah. That would be so interesting to mm. just like to watch it to compare. Mm. Because honestly, I'm it's like, I don't know if you're saying Cruz said there were some mm. mistakes. Yeah. No one That's the knows thing. about any mistakes. Exactly. No <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. That obviously, I get that, you know, if you're, if you notice something that you'd want to change in your department, mm-hmm. then it's like, oh, like it's so mm-hmm. hard to mm-hmm. not like yeah. think about that but you know most people won't I, I think about it with, with, with the film i yeah. just i haven't i haven't noticed any and like, i mean like come on most viewers um the audience doesn't look for mistakes unless no. they're critics critics yeah. critics do and yeah fuck that. yeah exactly exactly <laughs> but audience we just want to see the the story yes and we are willing to forget Almost anything, unless it's really, really bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think it was yeah, that, that's that's in, like I had no idea. So there are like three more versions. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, that would be interesting. But um, I'm pretty sure no one will ever see them. Probably not. Maybe, maybe they are already deleted. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I wonder. <laughs> and how did it like? You had no idea there will be serious as well, right? No, I think, no, I think no, no one, one did. Knew. Literally, yeah. no one yeah. did. Um, and even like when we were doing it, we all thought it was really cool when we were doing it. But like at the same time, it was like, we don't know if it's going to translate. Like yeah, we're doing it. Yeah, so it feels like, cool. It, but because like, it, it, it might sound like when you're doing it, it might sound like a project that like, yeah, it, probably it's good for festivals. But, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's that's how I kind of thought about it. I was like, people who are really into film might like this. I don't mm-hmm. know. But other than that, like, you know, you don't know, like, mm-hmm. you enjoy it, you think it's cool mm-hmm. for yourself. Yeah, but I mean, then... like, you work with such an amazing actress as well. Yeah, like, oh my God. One, yeah, like incredible. It's incredible. Insane. insane. Just incredible. And then suddenly it does really well, and mm-hmm. not just with, like, film people, but yeah, just, yeah. like, just with, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I was getting messages from people that I'd, like, worked with in pubs and stuff, mm-hmm. like, messaging me about it and mm-hmm. saying that they really liked it mm-hmm. and just like it was really interesting seeing who the the spectrum of people who had seen it and really loved it was really nice so mm-hmm. it felt like it was kind of a film for everyone um which i didn't really know if it was or not mm-hmm. like when we were doing it mm-hmm. um so that was really really great and then it was over obviously and you know you just move on yeah. blah 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 mm. and then do your life and then yeah. end of 2022 um or maybe it was like and beginning of like autumn or something like that um 
I got a call from Phil. I was like, why Phil call me? <laughs> um, Phil is? A Phil is director mm-hmm. of Boiling Point. Um, and, you know, I answered, we were just chatting and mm-hmm. he said, so we're turning the film into a show. Mm-hmm. It's been greenlit and we want you back mm-hmm. um, for the show. And uh, great, mm-hmm. amazing, mm-hmm. fantastic. A part that I don't have to audition for Mm -hmm. again. Ideal. Mm. (laughs) Um, And yeah, he told me what the storyline was going to be for my character. Mm. Um, No no spoilers. No spoilers. Like I'm still... Yeah. I know know that you have a crossed seat. Yeah. 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 So he told me that. um, And he told me what was going to happen in Mm -hmm. the show and Mm -hmm. with my character. And then... We sort of like, I think it's funny with with stuff like this, until it's happening, you kind of don't fully believe that it's going to mm-hmm. happen because mm-hmm. then like things get cancelled, things get pulled off the table, mm-hmm. like yeah. life happens, yeah. a pandemic happens and mm-hmm. all the shows get cancelled, you know, like you just don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this is really exciting in theory. Mm-hmm. However, I'm going to just keep it calm and mm-hmm. chill mm-hmm. because... You never know. Um, it's an amazing skill to have, to be fair. Like, I, I, I gotta tell you, I guess. Yeah. This is, <laughs> how long did uh, did it take you to, you know, just to get to this place when oh, you Andre. can let it go? Andre, Andre, still- Andre, Andre. It's been a rocky road, to be honest. <laughs> um, I actually feel like I did it in reverse because yes. at the beginning of my career, I was really good at that. Mm-hmm. That was, I felt like my mm-hmm. superpower mm-hmm. was that I just, I cared enough to want the job, mm-hmm. but then I didn't let it go too far mm-hmm. where I was just, it was like, I did the audition, really enjoyed doing the audition. And then I moved on and started like thinking about my own life again until mm-hmm. I got a job. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, the problem is you then start working and then you the pressure builds because you're like, oh, I've got jobs before. Mm. Why am I not getting jobs now? And I honestly, I feel like last year, which was the year that I did Boiling Point and that as in the show and it came out, was the worst year for my brain mm-hmm. with acting. Mm-hmm. And I think that there was a few factors involved in that being that in COVID times, there was, I think, three things that I lost. I booked three things that I ended up not doing for not just COVID reasons, but one of them was for COVID reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, And still to this day, not, I think, super valid. And it's still annoying. Um, you, you still you still can't let it go properly. I can in a way because it's like, but it's but there just, is a re- regret. But in, yeah. It's not a regret, but it's more like I can't believe that happened mm-hmm. um, because basically it was I think August of 2021. I think yeah. So Hannah had finished mm-hmm. um, August of 2021. I had an audition for a show, um, and I then I got recall. For the show and then i end up booking the job great really exciting however when i found out that i had booked the job my agent called me and told me that i had it and at that time and he was like so rehearsals are going to start next week um and then filming will be in blah 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 at that time i had covid and i was ill and also isolating mm-hmm. and I think my isolation ended the next Wednesday mm-hmm. or something. And I was like, this is great news. I've booked a role. However, rehearsals are next week. I have COVID right now and I won't be able to start rehearsals until my isolation is up. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I was still like symptomatic and everything. Um, and he was like, okay, um, let's try and figure this out basically and we were talking to production and having loads of calls that day and in my head i was like it's rehearsals like even though it's ideally you'd want to be there 
like I'll still be there for the second half of the week right. and I won't miss any filming and I've just had COVID so mm -hmm. I probably won't get it again mm -hmm. pretty much for the whole filming so that's kind of good in a way um, and calls back and forth back and forth back and forth at the end of the day my agent called me and he's like yeah. it's not going to happen mm -hmm. I'm sorry they have to go with someone else wow. and I was like I can't believe Mm -hmm. I can't believe this is happening mm -hmm. because it's so hard to book a job. It's so hard. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's so hard. There is a show uh, that in the last, like, I think it's it's in season three now. In the last three years, uh, including last week, mm -hmm. I had nine, I did nine self-tapes for them, nine for nine different roles in three years, and they still can't. What? Pick me I mean, I mean, it's just it's 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 been like I will not not okay. name the show, but basically, it, like I, I know that I even was shortlisted once for one of the roles. They took like big two people sent to production uh, to to the network and yeah. like, picked someone else, and they kind of they keep coming back to me, which is a good sign. There's That's like cool. okay, it's, it's really good, great, okay, it's good, but at the same time, it's like nine. Come on, just give me the role. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, God, that is tough. Mm. That's tough. Yeah, it must get to a point where you're like, I actually don't want to see you anymore. I, I, I told my agent at some point. I was like, Look, they already have like seven yeah. tapes from they me. Know they what know what you can do. Me. Can like next time they just book me or don't come back? But then <laughs> yeah. obviously when they send me two more, I was like, oh, Of course, I'll do it. Of course, I'll do it. Of course, <laughs> why not? Well, wait a minute. Oh my God, that's yeah. really toying with someone. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard. Exactly. It's hard to book a job and it's very hard to not do the job that you booked because mm -hmm. you had COVID. Mm. All right. So uh, then you couldn't believe, well, I mean, like you were kind of trying to be careful about believing it happens yes. or not. Yeah. And then it did. And then it did. January rolls around and uh, last January and they're like, yeah, we're going to start filming soon. So pack up your shit and mm -hmm. move over to Manchester because that's where we filmed Oh, really? It. Yeah. Well, did you film the first one in Manchester? No, the first yeah. one was in... Because it's, it's different restaurants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one was in London. And yeah. it's this, the show is still set in London, but yeah, uh, yeah, we yeah. filmed it in Manchester. Yeah. And they, it was a set this time. It wasn't a... I thought about it. It was I a thought, built set. So. Yeah, I thought it for a series maybe. But it's only four episodes, right? Yeah. yeah. And will there be a... Season, season? I actually I'm not even just like being coy about it I don't know yeah um I hope so yeah um people seem to have really liked it mm -hmm. so yeah. um I hope there will be mm. but as of now I have no information how different was uh f doing serious oh I mean definitely like so different because obviously it was just com it was more traditional like that's what it's like to be on the no, show because, uh, but because yeah. I think episode one it starts with a very long one shot scene it does yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so that's like I think 15 minutes mm -hmm. or something um and it's kind of we actually ended up doing that kind of close to the end of filming mm -hmm. um uh, which was kind of fun and it was it was weird going back to doing that like one take even mm -hmm. though it was like only 15 minutes you're still so like nervous about it and then it's like how did we do an, like an hour and a half mm -hmm. of this because it's so nerve-wracking mm -hmm. you're like oh my god mm -hmm. I'm in this bit for like two seconds what if I fuck it up and <laughs> then the whole take is ruined yeah. um you don't want to be that guy mm -hmm. um and uh, and it was as well, it was like one of those things where it was like, I think we filmed it sort of, I think we were rehearsing it all day and then we filmed it towards the end of the day and it was like getting to the time where we had to stop mm. filming as well. So it was like the adrenaline uh, adrenaline was pumping because you're like, oh my God, we actually have to get this right, mm -hmm. like right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was nice to do that and then have the rest of it be like traditional mm -hmm. kind of the way you would usually yeah. shoot a show. Um, and it's nice as well because um, in when we did the film, we weren't actually together for that long because it was such a shorter time frame yeah. than when you'd usually do a film or like yeah. a show or whatever. Um, so it actually gave us the opportunity because we all got on like really well in the film. Mm -hmm. um, but this actually gave us the opportunity opportunity to really actually spend time together mm -hmm. um which was super nice mm -hmm. 
yeah and now it's out you can see it and hopefully we'll do another one yeah i i, I should hope so mm. i will finish it very very soon uh i mean i have two and a half episodes left because i think i i think i fell asleep like during during the second episode but again mm. it was very late <laughs> yeah yeah I, i'm a terror for falling asleep watching stuff uh, so I, I don't know for for me and i need to find something new to be fair i love office as well but not as much mm -hmm. but my three guilty pleasures mm -hmm. like when i and i wish all of those shows yeah. were probably like 10 12 15 times i don't know like mm. a lot of times mm. so it's uh, friends yeah how about your mother mm -hmm. and big bang theory yeah that's yeah. and right now when i kind of know them almost you know by heart yeah yeah, yeah. i just like yeah. it's my go to sleep shows so yeah like, okay. yeah yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> always Friends for me. Was always like when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Like I grew up watching Friends and just watching that on repeat. Like mm -hmm. I had the DVDs and I would play that when I at night when I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And I'd wake up in the morning and there'd be the the menu DVD menu. That's like my first thing <laughs> I would see every day. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like I know that show like mm. back to front now no what do you think have you watched how i met your mother how i met your mother i could never get into oh. i think my brother loved it um but so i've seen it like when mm -hmm. we were growing up and he was watching it but i never watched it yeah i maybe one day i'll like watch it all the way through yeah um because i'm sure i like it i i know i know i love it and to be fair like there are I would say that Friends and How I Met a Mother for me kind of on the same level, but mm. like in different things. Because How I Met a Mother for me is way more inventive. Yeah. It's way more inventive yeah. with like how they build a story, how they build a story inside every episode. Like mm. there are so such an interesting episodes just by by themselves. Like mm. and it's all like a part of like this huge kind of like he is actually looking for their yeah, mother. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, the ending. It though, is a good concept. The ending though might be a little bit confusing for some, some people. Yeah. I hated it at first, but they're like- I've I heard a lot there's been contro controversy about it. Uh, but after I rewatched it like two, three times, mm. I actually love it now. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's weird because it makes all the previous story even more kind of I mean, like, like uh, I, I could talk about this show for a long time. We're not <laughs> Let's do here. a new podcast where we just talk about how I met your mother. <laughs> well, we could. You know yeah. what? It would be actually, actually, it would be great. Like every week, for example, mm. we just watch an episode yeah. and then we just discuss it. It yeah. would be interesting. Exactly, it would be. To do. I would. I love those podcasts where yeah. it's just about a show and they just watch. Yeah. They just talk about each episode of the show. I think I love that. You know what? I think let let's. Let's pencil this yeah. idea because I would love to do it. I just need to kind of figure out how to do this quick and yeah, fast. And exactly. then I need to find a way to make some money because, yeah. uh, mm. you know. But actually, I would love to do it. It would yeah. be great because, exactly. like, I would be like, you know, the veteran. Exactly. Kind of and I'd be the like, movie oh, and yeah. I don't know anything. Yeah. yeah, I think it could be like. It's happening. All right. You know what? All right. Uh, well, I think that's from the thing that you did mm. in film. Mm. And, you know, like on screen, that's kind of it. What, what about theatre? Theatre, I grew up doing theatre. Um, and I've never done it professionally. I would love to do it. I would really love to do it. I think I'm so not like, I'm so much less confident uh, with that because mm -hmm. I just haven't done it enough. I think I did it when I was younger and then I took that like, break where I didn't do any acting and then when I got back to it I just did I didn't really do that much theatre like I did mm -hmm. a couple of showcases with identity but that was my only real live performances mm -hmm. so really I haven't done theatre like since I was I guess it's some somewhere in my teenage years mm -hmm. so it was something I loved to do when yeah. I was younger um and I always used to do I went to this uh like Saturday drama school in Jersey for a good few years and we would always do they would always have in like the half terms of school and in the summer holidays they do like a week or like two weeks where we'd work on uh a play or a musical and then mm -hmm. put it on and i always loved doing that so much i think in the short in like the half terms we would do a shakespeare play mm -hmm. um and then in the summer we'd usually do a musical um and 
it was always so much fun and I would really love to do it. But I feel like so, I feel like a baby coming back to it. Like I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I feel really like, um, not like physically nervous about it, but like, I just feel a bit like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, and I feel like there's so many other people like my age now who are actors who really know what they're doing in terms of like theatre stuff. And I feel a bit like, Ugh, I don't even know how to, how I would go about it kind of thing. Look, I started acting. Well, I actually started thinking about acting after 30, like I was 32. Mm. So if I can, do, yeah, <laughs> and, I, and I did some theater, not a lot, but I did some theater, like especially uh, like Russian, French theater in mm. London. And if I can do it, you definitely can because yeah. you were performing all your life. I I never performed ever mm. before. <laughs> you like at thirty two. Suddenly, I was like, oh, you know what? Hmm, mm. What can I do? Yeah. Someone who never was like you know. Well, I was always kind of like a arctic clown you know with my yeah. friends i'm like yeah. always always the stupid one mm. you know who like says stupid things yeah. and then regrets, <laughs> regrets about it uh, but i never did anything kind of like you know on stage mm. and I, if i can do it come on you yeah. will you'll be fine but the i think the, your agency they do, don't do theater right um they do definitely but it's less i think focused on that and i think mm. like um and the thing is you know it is i'm I wouldn't want to do it if it takes away from like the screen stuff, because that's always been my love. Like I've always like, not just like wanted to like act in movies, but I just love making movies mm -hmm. like, and film is my love. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would always put that first, mm -hmm. but I mean, I have had like one or two theater auditions here and there, but, mm -hmm. Um, I, it's something that I would love to do. And I think more this year, even if it's something that's just like, uh, like me and Susie have talked about, um, like potentially doing something, like putting something on, mm -hmm. um, just like a small thing. I'd love to get back into it. Cause I think it's, it's one of those things that like acting is the hard thing about acting is that if it's something that you love so much, and for me, it's something that I love so much. It's like my biggest passion, mm -hmm. um, but you don't get to do it all the time. It's not, you can't do it all the time yeah. um, because you have to be employed to do it. And it's not like you it's, just do yeah. a scene in your bedroom. Like it's it's, it's not, a lot out of your control. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it's, it's different with like say music, you can, you can play guitar every day and you can write songs, you can write mm -hmm. loads of songs, you can, you know, Whereas you can't act every day, really. Mm -hmm. And I think theatre gives you that opportunity to do more. Because even on set, like, yeah. most of your time is waiting around. Yeah. And yeah. then you have, like, you're, you're, like, waiting around, like, oh, I've really got to be on it for when I have to do my scene. And then you do your scene and it's, like, you know, however long it is. And then you're, like, okay, yeah. it's over now. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, that was a lot of, like, even in Boiling Point, like, it happens where you just, like, we all agreed it was so funny because it was such a like weird time really mm -hmm. it was really fun but like basically all of us because it was like ensemble it was like hard you couldn't really have every like everyone in individually you kind of had to have everyone there because there was so many people in like the back of mm -hmm. set other people's shots and blah 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 because it's all in one place mainly um we all ended up sort of being there every day. Mm -hmm. And then our green room was like this, it just looked like a, an empty, abandoned um, sixth form common room. <laughs> um, so it kind of felt like we were just like teenagers mm -hmm. in this room, mm -hmm. like all day, every day, yeah. basically. And then obviously we'd each go in and do our like separate things. And sometimes it'd be all of us, but then there'd be like maybe three or four who were left in the common room. Like, I guess I'm going to read a book now or like, you know, play music. And there, there's a lot of waiting around that mm -hmm. just is in film and comedy, yeah, yeah, get yeah, away from it. Unless you're in every scene all the time. Yeah, which can also, I think, be very, very stressful. Oh because God, yeah, just that's a lot. That is a lot. It's Maybe maybe you don't want to be the main guy. Maybe you want to be like, just, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it's the sweet spot is mm -hmm. that 
that character. You still have a lot of time. Yeah. You still have a lot of, you know, like love, like people actually see you. They yeah. see your work. When yeah. you, like as an actor, you want people to see your yeah, work. Yeah, of course. But at the same time, you have time for sleep. Exactly, sometimes. exactly. Whereas if you're a lead, not mm. so much, really. Mm. You don't mm. really get to have a life. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I was watching a podcast recently with uh, Nathan Fillion. Mm. Uh, did, uh, have you watched uh, Castle? No, I've heard of it though. I love it. Uh, yeah. He's like the rookie as well, like mm. this, this series. So this this guy, uh, he was like, yeah, he, he was the lead in Castle. He mm. was like, ah, I didn't have time for anything. You don't. Like, you uh, like don't. I, I, I lost so much weight. Mm. I looked awful because I didn't have time for anything because you were shooting a whole season. Like you were all the time, you're on set and he's in, basically in every scene. Yeah. And he's like, it's it's like, it's not, I'm not complaining, but no, it was but hard. It's, can, it's yeah, like, it's a lot. Mm. Like I think people underestimate, if you're the lead in a show, it's like crazy how much time it takes up. You mm -hmm. like, it's so hard to function in your normal life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also do that it just mm -hmm. is even like you know things like eating properly and stuff like that do just go out the window because mm -hmm. you're busy all the time yeah yeah it's not, it's rewarding it's, it's rewarding and it's also not laying breaks no, under the sun but exactly. at the same time it can be yeah it can be yeah uh, hard. all right so what's happening with your music is my music so i think this month is where I'm gonna make a plan with my music, mm -hmm. I think. Um, because I still wanna do it. It's still something that I wanna do. Um, it's just, I need to figure out how to do it in a way that I want to do it. Mm -hmm. And in a way that, because it's quite hard to do anything with music without putting all of your time into mm -hmm. getting it out there. Is basically with anything. Yeah, else. exactly. Um, and yeah, I because last month I was making this short film um, uh, with a friend of mine, and it's been the works for like a couple of years now. And then the last few months has been completely consumed by like doing that film because we were both producing and directing it, so we were, like had the responsibility of everything, um, which is a lot when you're making a film turns mm -hmm. out it's really hard to do mm. um <laughs> who would think, <laughs> who would think? <laughs> um uh so that's been i literally have completely like not even thought about music to try and get this film done mm -hmm. finally um and now we've done it obviously we haven't been in the edit but um we've shot it so it is now a physical thing or Kind well, of, yeah. yeah. Are, are you who, who's editing it? Are you editing it yourself? Uh, my so my friend who I directed and produced mm -hmm. it with, he's an editor, so mm -hmm. he's going to edit it, um, and we're both going to be in the edit room. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, now that is shot, we have footage, we have something to make a film out mm -hmm. of, which just makes everything so much easier because there's no longer any logistics. Mm -hmm. which is the worst thing yeah. while making a film. Logistics, mm -hmm. so much logistics. Um, now that that's done, I have so much more brain space. Mm -hmm. um, and this month, so I'm lucky enough to um, live with a music producer mm -hmm. um, who produces my music. Mm -hmm. um, sitting down. We're making a plan. I have a song. I have actually more than one song that's mm -hmm. pretty much ready to come out. Mm -hmm. But it's more about being able to release it in a way that's like actually, you know, people will mm -hmm. hear it. And, you know, like making sure there's some sort of like campaign behind it, which you just have to think about. And I have to think about like, because that's the, the bit about it that I hate as well um is the like promotion side yeah. of stuff because i'm not very good at like like i think i'm not very good at like selling myself or like selling things that i've done really um i just make a thing and then i'm like i like it I just maybe you it. should like it too i just it's not it does not come naturally mm -hmm. to me to to be very much yeah. like you know like listen to this like do this you know it's yeah, so yeah. it's so foreign to me. It, it's a, it's a thing that I like even in my design career. Like I know how to do shit, mm. but I don't know how to sell 
shit. Exactly. <laughs> shit that they do. Yeah, and it's it really is. It's annoying mm. because I think it it hurts me as well when it comes to like obviously, um, obviously when I'm not acting, like sometimes if I've had, you know, good times in acting, then I don't have to have another job. But mm -hmm. also when I haven't, I do have to have another mm -hmm. job. And I suffer in that regard mm -hmm. because I cannot get a good job. Like I, the, only, the jobs that I get are just like ones that you don't really want to do. Or maybe you do want to do, but like for me, I don't particularly like... I've worked in pubs and I worked in cafes mm -hmm. and I've like worked in hospitality. I don't love it. I mm -hmm. really don't love it. It depends like if I have a really nice team or mm -hmm. like, you know, if it's a really like nice company, but generally speaking, I don't, I'm not successful at getting jobs. I think because I'm too, I'm quite a casual person. Mm -hmm. And what comes with that is also not being able to like sell myself or make myself like on paper mm -hmm. or like whatever, uh, be desirable to someone else for whatever reason mm -hmm. I need to be. Um, and yeah, so when it comes to like music and stuff, that's the bit that I really hate is like, okay, so I've got to make all these posts for social media so that like people will hear my song mm -hmm. and like, I've, you know, it it just I struggle to find the motivation to like want to do that because that's the bit that I just don't love at yeah. all and I love the music I like listening to music and I want to make music that I like to listen to mm -hmm. because I'm sure that if I like it then maybe someone else will like it as well mm -hmm. um uh and I need to figure out what is the best way I can make myself do that other side so that people actually do get to hear my music. Mm -hmm. um, because it's just not something that comes naturally to me. It ends up not working out or I don't plan it enough or I like haven't thought it through or like I need to really make a proper like long-term plan mm -hmm. so that I'm not like, that I think is easy for me to, to do all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know if it's doing a lot of stuff in advance or like what it is, but I need to figure out how I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so that is my goal mm -hmm. now that I've finished this film, other than trying to get a normal person job, <laughs> which also I'm terrible at. <laughs> so um, yeah, those are my two tasks at the moment is get a normal person job, which is hard because turns out I'm not qualified. I didn't finish my A-levels, mm -hmm. didn't go to uni. Mm -hmm. I don't have any skills other than acting and singing. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, so that's a challenge. Can, can you make money with singing like in some ways, not restaurants? That's the thing. Like I'm going to try and look into that. Like I vaguely started looking into that with mm. um, uh, a friend of mine who's a pianist um, last year. So I need to now, I've like fallen off the face of the earth mm. when it comes to that. So mm. I need to text him again and Wait, be like, uh, I'm alive. Should we still your this? your brother, he's a singer too, yes, right? He's so a like, how, how yeah. does it happen that you both are talented? <laughs> well, it's weird because my dad works in finance, and my mum um, was a nurse. So it's not as if we were like born into yeah. this like yeah. life of artistic. Mm -hmm. um, so you're like not, yeah. not nepotist babies. No, um, no. <laughs> um, but having said that, I feel like, especially as I've got older, I feel like I really see the qualities in my parents um, that that could have been creative if mm -hmm. they went like down different paths. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they either of them regret like what mm -hmm. they do. Um, like uh, my mum, yeah, like I don't think either of them regret what they do um, or what they did. But um, I can definitely see qualities within them that yeah. that I can then understand like oh you know in another life maybe you could have done this or maybe you could have done that mm -hmm. like I think my love of film comes from my parents mm -hmm. because my mum loves like she you know watches everything mm -hmm. um and you know we talk about that all the time and then I'm like it's sort of only recently that I'm really realizing like oh maybe I got that from you and my dad loves a movie like mm -hmm. my dad loves a movie and so I realized, oh, like I grew up watching films with my dad because mm -hmm. that's what he liked to do as well. And that's, you know, like 
they have that same sort of like interest in in things Mm -hmm. and it just like now it's come out where we do that as jobs whereas it didn't for them um but also in both of my uh both my mom and my dad's side of the family we have like artists and musicians Mm -hmm. um so it's definitely in the blood somehow Mm -hmm. um but yeah it just so happens that i mean i think Tig, my brother, he wanted to be, until he was like, maybe, I don't know, 15 or something, he was more interested in sports and he mm. like was really, really good at football, mm-hmm. is really good at football. Um, and I think he kind of wanted to do that. Mm. But then he broke his leg mm. when he was a teenager and ended up, he was already learning guitar and then ended up like spending loads of time playing music because mm-hmm. he couldn't do any sports. And then everything like turned mm. around for him. And then even then, like he didn't, even sing until he was like way older than me um like in terms of like i was singing for when i was super young yeah. but he literally didn't sing like at all until he was like definitely i guess in his late teens i think mm-hmm. um, before that the the singing that he had done was being in metal bands so like mm-hmm. screamo <laughs> um but then turns out he starts singing when he's a teenager, like late teenager, and he has a really good voice and yeah. he's a really talented guitarist. Um, yeah. yeah. And so we just ended up doing these creative careers. So are you going to collaborate? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we've written some stuff together, but, um, uh, we always like start it and then we end up like getting distracted and, mm-hmm. and doing other things. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think my, I think my relationship with my brother is quite like, we're very silly together. Mm-hmm. So I think it's hard for us to do serious things. <laughs> we'll do silly things. <laughs> I know. Maybe we should make silly songs. Yeah. Um, why not? Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll do something one day. I always think, I always have, these ideas where mm. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna like do this with Tig, or like then Tig mm. will come to me and be like, oh, we should write this song together, mm. and then we like have this great idea, and we're so excited about it, and mm. then like two seconds later, we've forgotten about it, and we're doing something else. So mm. maybe well, one day we'll actually. Make I, I think I think you should. I think you should, and especially now when you like when you think you can move more into kind of put more effort into mm. singing, maybe mm. maybe you could, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go back to acting. Yes. How do you prepare for a scene or for a role? This is something that I have never been able to answer really because I don't, I'm not one of those actors that has a very specific method Mm -hmm. um, to come at something. Um, Just because I think that's never been my, I'm not, I don't think I'm good with things that are like as structured as that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I have to kind of like, depending on what it is, like make up what my process is Mm -hmm. for that specific role as I go along. The the only thing that I do always, or I guess always do, um, is I just write down um, what my character's, feelings are in the scene Mm -hmm. and like feelings that might be from you know whatever's happened before and whatever might be coming up in the future for that character Mm -hmm. i just literally go on my phone on my notes and like write a load of random shit like stream of consciousness Mm -hmm. stuff and then that sort of then reading through that and even like writing it at the same time makes me make sense of the of like where the character is at so I'll maybe like start with one thing and then I'll start writing another thing and be like oh so actually that bit's more relevant for the character than actually this thing that I wrote at the mm-hmm. beginning like it doesn't mm-hmm. matter as much um so yeah I think that's the main thing that I do um and then I think I'm big on just trying to be super in the moment I thrive like in that moment and it's like the scene kind of i read the scene a lot and when i write when i learn lines i 
write them down, but not because I necessarily find that helpful to learn them, but it helps me to go through the story of the scene slowly. Mm -hmm. And so that I really, because if I just read it, then I'm, I'm not giving myself enough time to like, like as I'm writing this line, it's, it's, you know, making me think about what's happening right now in this moment of Mm -hmm. the, of the scene. So I think that really helps me because I get a real, through through writing, I get a real understanding of what is happening in the Mm -hmm. scene. Um, And then the rest of it, I think, other than like doing that, that thing of like kind of my character's like thoughts about the other character, about the situation, Mm -hmm. you know, just like general stuff or what they might be feeling. Um, I just really try and use the moment of the scene Mm -hmm. when I'm doing it to affect me and I feel like it always does work Mm -hmm. um and I was thinking about that a lot actually when I did this film this short that I just made because I was in it as well and because I was doing most of like the I was doing the producing with my friend um I that was what I was mostly thinking about I wasn't really thinking about the acting side and Mm -hmm. then I was stressed coming up to the end because I was like oh I haven't really Mm -hmm. thought about the acting side at all what if I'm (laughs) shit now because I haven't like planned um but and so I was quite apprehensive because I just felt a bit like uh, obviously I've known the characters for so long because we've been developing this thing for ages and we've been Mm -hmm. talking about it for years Mm -hmm. um however I hadn't approached it really as an actor yet. And so I was a bit like worried about like how it would work or like Mm -hmm. I was just worried about how I would get into that space with it. Um, And that's, I just did that notes thing where I just um, went through my character's like thoughts and belief systems about the other character and just about how she lives her life and doing that and then just being on set and making sure I was really in the moment and really listening to the other character and letting the other character affect me Mm -hmm. and trying to affect the other character. Um, That's how it just works Mm -hmm. for me. And Mm -hmm. that's how I know I do my best performances. Um, and then when it comes to like anything, any scenes that I have to do by myself, I guess the only other thing is like music just yeah. helps me because it just gets me in a mood, mm. you know? And then as long as I know what mood I'm supposed to be in mm-hmm. or like where I want my character to start in anyway, then um, I just have that. And then again, let the moment take me and having probably also done those like thoughts and belief systems like writing about Mm. what do I you know like my character believes that this is they're doing everything possible to protect the other person Mm -hmm. and like just like stuff like that Mm -hmm. um yeah that's pretty much Mm -hmm. it I don't have like a really set thing and I always think like it's probably going to change and like I'm probably going to learn a lot of stuff because I'm not super like, um, I don't have a lot of acting theory in me, I Mm -hmm. think. Um, I've learned obviously it through school and then through like identity and like other acting classes that I've gone to. Um, But I don't necessarily feel like I've retained all this information about like Mm the like the ways in which you can prepare for mm-hmm. a role and like blah, blah, blah. Um, that just never sticks with me. Mm-hmm. And I just have to approach it as like, as humanly without as possible. System. Yeah, without a system. Mm-hmm. And just as like, like the basis is that I am trying to understand another human. Mm-hmm. And I do that all the time in normal life. Mm-hmm. So I just translate that into a fake mm. or a different reality. Yeah. Yeah. I understand, I understand what you mean. I understand what you mean because sometimes, um, sometimes there are scenes that I feel like a kind of system works, mm. but 
but sometimes there's there there are scenes that I did maybe I I kind of I used the technique wrong, mm. uh, but it felt like it actually blocks me. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing is for me is that I definitely sometimes use utilize different techniques, mm. but I think for me the key is to not be stuck on mm. one thing mm -hmm. and just if it comes up and feels like it's right right now mm -hmm. then that's great and use it but if it doesn't then to not like push yourself into doing a thing mm -hmm. because then 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 suddenly there's this idea that I should be doing this and as soon as you're like I should be doing this then you're taking all the spontaneity out of mm -hmm. the scene and you're just not going to get that those like authentic reactions and mm -hmm. like yeah, um yeah. and like be able to fully live in the scene um and the thing is i always think about this because i think you know sometimes i'm like maybe i would have done a better job in this or a better job in that if i had more of like a process and maybe i'll figure out like a process that works for me mm -hmm. that's a bit more like solid and structured mm -hmm. but but it's just I haven't found something that I've been able to connect to in a way that doesn't get rid of that like spontaneity mm -hmm. and like being able to like yeah. be fully affected yeah. Yeah, in yeah. the scene. Yeah, I understand what I mean. And I think like even, even with the technique that uh, I learned from Lee Lomas in the Working Artist Studio, it's kind of like I use it kind of well I, when i use it right <laughs> i try to use it like as a, as a canvas yeah for the scene but then as soon as you're in the scene uh you kind of need to remember about your intentions and mm. everything but like if you don't feed from from your partner and if you don't react if you're not in it like it's it it doesn't work i think it kind of come, comes hand to hand together yeah. but yeah it's it's sometimes i felt like with some scenes i felt like i'm constrained with the system mm. like with, with, with this system anyways uh who are your inspirations are like other who, who are the biggest names for you right now in, in acting oh that's a good question it's always someone who's quite like different to what mm -hmm. i know that i can give mm -hmm. so like i don't necessarily look at someone like and and watch them and think like you know, oh, I, that's what I want to be able to do. It kind of, I do have that in a way, but I know that I won't be ever yeah. doing what they're doing. Yeah. And it's more that I love to watch them. And I think that it's like, they're like amazing at what they do. And I know that I can be amazing mm -hmm. maybe at something that I do, but it's not going to be the yeah. same as what they do, if that makes sense. Like one of my favorite actors ever is Steve Carell, because I think he's oh. so amazingly funny, but he is such a good emotional actor. Mm -hmm. And I just think that he's one of the most talented people. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that like the stuff that he does, I'm not like, I want to do that because I know I won't do that. And I know mm -hmm. I'm not like, that's not within me and that's not my strength to do those specific things. Mm -hmm. But I think he is one of the people I admire the most mm -hmm. for sure. And I yeah. think that he would probably be one of the, I mean, obviously there's loads of actors that I'd love to work with and I'd mm -hmm. probably like learn a lot from and be like, Oh my God, mm -hmm. I'm so lucky to, mm -hmm. to be acting with you. But I think he might be my ultimate, like, like figure of like I think you are just fundamentally great yeah yeah and so unquestionably great he's he's amazing he's amazing like he's amazing as, as like in comedy mm. but at the same time uh in uh what was it day night show, day show? Uh, what was uh the morning show morning show mm. in the morning show like it's it's not a comedy role at all no. he's amazing it as well yeah. yeah i think he's insane like yeah. in office everything that he oh my does God. it's like I would, exactly what he said like i would never be able to do anything mm. like yeah it, ever yeah uh, yeah yeah he's amazing I yeah and i think that like he just is able to i mean i guess it's a personal thing as well but like for me, he's just able to 
affect me so much like with what he does in a way that I think not a lot of people can mm. um like I just yeah there's something so pure about his acting mm. and it's yeah it, I just think he's amazing mm. yeah. just amazing you're also a musician so mm. your favorite singers bands Ooh. inspirations oh gosh so many so many um I think there's a band called Muna who I love. Mm -hmm. They're like um, this trio, like synth pop trio, and they're just so amazing. I went to see them live for mm -hmm. the first time last year and it was incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and then I love, oh God, there's so many, there's actually so, like music I could literally talk about for ever. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many artists that I, love so much um i think recently the past like i guess six months i'm into an artist called field guide and he kind of does more it's kind of like chill stuff and he's got a really interesting voice that i just like it's one of those voices that is so unique and i just want to listen to it all the time i think that's really amazing there's some voices who i think like there's some singers who i think technically are really brilliant mm -hmm. but for some reason it's like there's something about the sound of their voice that i can't like i just can't like really or i can't mm -hmm. want to listen to um but his voice is so i don't know it's like it's just interesting i just want to like hear it yeah i um, what i mean there was one one uh, russian artist the singer uh she is very young now i think mm. but she started with all those shows like voice mm, yeah and like uh, some, something like that and she started uh first videos of her uh on youtube you could find when she was 15 16 and she was singing those uh like a human uh just, i'm i'm uh, I'm only here. Yes, yeah. this one. I, I'm not trying to sing it because you know, I, I can't. <laughs> Dancing and singing, no, go home. Yeah, uh, bye bye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and she, like, the, the most amazing her cover is in in the show is Elvis's uh, song. God, I'm not good at like, uh, Elvis. Falling songs. in love with you. Oh, I can't help falling in love with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but she did it like it's absolutely different like, really? it, like it's it's i it's, love that it's though. very different mm. and but the thing is with her voice most people who hear her for the first time mm. and then watch some reactions on youtube as well <laughs> people are just like is it her voice is there any effect because she has very 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 deep voice Ooh, for, for a girl like insanely deep Dan and uh very like I'll maybe send you a link. Oh yeah, send like, me a link. Because, I definitely because she hear it. is like this is the most unique voice I've yeah. heard ever. Because yeah. she goes very deep, but like uh, and again, she started with like when she was 15, 16, she was mostly doing this deep thing. Yeah. Uh and without going high a lot. Mm. But now she actually like she is her range is also is, is very big. And I'm not like I don't know anything about singing. <laughs> I just know like ah, I like this, I don't yeah, like this. Of course. Uh, this is good. This is But good. you don't need to you like it's yeah. the same with like I'm not a very technical mm. singer, but like I know what I like to hear and I know what I don't yeah, like. Yeah, but hear. there are like some voices that are technically are great, mm. probably as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But there's no there is no voice in this way. There is no kind of something yeah, special about it's it. It's like, just like it's like a soul almost. Like you're, it's like missing that yeah. like yeah. core to yeah. it. Yeah, like, films. Films. What do you think about modern cinema? Modern cinema. Yeah. Are you a nerd? It depends what you class yeah, as. I agree because, because like there's her... different ways in which you could be a nerd, yeah, yeah. and I think I'm a nerd in that I love films mm -hmm. so much however i'm also very i love pretty much all kinds of films mm -hmm. i'm not um i don't have too much pretentiousness mm -hmm. when it comes to film mm -hmm. um and i'm very open to liking art house films just as much as i am blockbuster films mm -hmm. Because I think sometimes when people say like you're a film nerd, it's like mm -hmm. you only like the really like yeah, you know yeah, like I agree. I agree. A, like film artsy like would be in festivals mm -hmm. films. 
but I like pretty much anything. Mm-hmm. Um, anything, anything um, noticeable from like recently series or film um, that I love, or um, I think I really last year. Um, I went to see Past Lives. I don't know if you saw Past Lives. But I just thought it was so, so amazing. Mm. I loved it. It's I. It's definitely, I think, a film that I know some people who probably won't like it. Um, because it's quite slow and it's quite quiet mm-hmm. um, as a vibe. Not literally quiet, but that's how I would yeah, describe yeah, it. Yeah. Um, however, I think it's so beautifully done and it's like i think maybe one of the only films that i've seen really that that writes has written relationships in a really current and true and like healthy way um like kind of I won't spoil anything but like the idea is there's like our main character is this um uh young Korean woman who she's she emigrated to America when she was like 12 or something um and so there's there's a lot of like themes about you know her uh, like her American identity and her Korean identity and it's kind of that's explored through relationships Mm -hmm. and she has an American husband, but she has also someone from Korea who is like an old flame Mm -hmm. um, of hers. And it's just about exploring those two relationships and how they kind of like interact and cross over and how like conflicted, not really in terms of love, but just generally conflicted the the main character Mm -hmm. is. And it writes really good conversations i think of like a married couple Mm -hmm. in a way that's like i think not really done in films because you see so many films where they present relationships in quite a toxic way Mm -hmm. um and that is apparently normal and then you grow up in real life and you find out that that's not what relationships Mm -hmm. are like um but it's not really like represented very well in the in film and stuff. Mm. And then there's this film that I I was like watching and there were these scenes and these conversations that were like so beautifully done and so real, like the most real and true to life conversations that I've seen in, in, in film in a mm. long time. And I just came out of it being so like, oh, like it just moved me so much. And yeah, felt really like, realistic but also in a way where it wasn't like it was you know made really beautifully it was like shot really beautifully um so there was that element of like like not not realism and like something being heightened and like like gorgeous to look at Mm -hmm. but also underneath were these like interactions with people that was so 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 real um and yeah i loved it what's What's next for you? Anything in the pipeline right now? Nothing in the pipeline. Um, I've decided I have spent a long time last year worrying and thinking about my career. Mm-hmm. And I've decided that that is no longer the way I'm going to operate. Okay. Of course, I am going to take opportunities as they arise. And I'm going to also be doing things that might help my career. However, I think I need to change my mindset about it because I was miserable last year Mm. because I felt so consumed by how I was going to be successful in my career and feeling like I didn't know if it was possible to get there. Um, And I was trying to figure it all out. And that, Mm -hmm. I think, is just not helpful because you can't figure it all out and you don't know what's going to happen. Especially especially in acting. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like, famously, in fact, Mm -hmm. in acting. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I think... I mean, I want to make more films, like, behind the camera. Um, So, that's 
a goal for this year. Obviously, I've just made my first one. Um, and Oh, it's still in the process. Post-production. Exactly, yeah. So we're going to go into the edit of that. And like we have a few... Um, a few things that we've been like talking about, about other concepts and stuff, but I definitely want to put more into now stuff behind the camera as well as I don't want to like switch because mm-hmm. I still want to do acting, mm-hmm. always will. Um, but yeah, I want to put more time into making my own stuff and then have more, like I was saying earlier, have more of a plan about like what I'm going to do with music because I don't want to not do it, Mm -hmm. but it's just about figuring out how I can do it in a way that works for me. Um, Because that's what I haven't figured out yet. Mm -hmm. It's just been like, oh, maybe I'll do this now. Maybe I'll do this. And Mm -hmm. I need to have more of a like, like, I guess, foresight and plan of like what's going to happen with it and how I'm going to do it. And then just follow that, I Mm -hmm. think, rather than constantly like oh maybe i should do this maybe i should do that like and sort of like scrambling a bit mm. um and then hopefully i'll get an acting job who knows or maybe you will get an acting job and then you will won't be able to do anything exactly. that you just described exactly <laughs> exactly Fingers um, crossed. i'm ready to have whatever happens happen mm-hmm. i think nice than, nice state of mind yeah it's very nice state of mind uh what would be your is there like in your head mm. somewhere like and like an ideal project, ideal film, uh, series, role, mm. play. Yeah, people people ask me this quite a lot. And I think I'm still so like new mm-hmm. to working. Obviously, I haven't been working for like a good few years, but like I'm still so new to it mm-hmm. that I just feel like I want to do everything, you know? I do. <laughs> yeah, like I don't really have something that I am like, oh, that's what I want to do. I want to be in like a show like this or I want to be in a film like this because there's so many things that I like watch or that come out and they're so different. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I'd love to do any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. I could easily see you. Well, something, something like. Well, it's finished now, but like something like Last Kingdom. Uh, yeah, yeah, Vikings. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to do something like that. I love anything or that's s- like something like with some wizardry, witchery, oh, you know, God, yeah. stuff. That was my for a while there. Um, that was like my thing where I was just kept going up for things that were like I'm a witch or I'm mm-hmm. like some sort of version of the devil or yeah. like I'm you know there's something weird about me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would still love to do something like that. I just want to do like mm. whatever, really. Um, I just want to work and act and do different things. Amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> all right. Blitz round. Blitz round. Uh, quick lighting questions, quick okay. answers, or not necessarily quick answers. Okay. If you want to expand okay. easily. Texting or talking? Talking. Cats or dogs? Dogs, obviously. Yeah. Uh, your one guilty pleasure? Ooh. Um, sugar. Like, yeah. big time. Big time. Like, just just eating oh, sugar? Oh, not, not sugar, but like, okay, like, desserts, okay. I think. Like, yeah. I can't have a dessert every day, but yeah. I want to. <laughs> and sometimes I do. So, right. but I know it's bad. And yeah. I know it's an addiction. Yeah? But Is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. I'm 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 the other way around. I'm mean, like give me meat. I like really? if I if I go somewhere to like if I had a good steak. Yeah. I just say no to dessert. Yeah, it's honestly Dustin is the same. My mm. partner's the same. He does not have a sweet tooth mm. at all. Like he his like dessert is another thing that's savory, mm. basically. Yeah. But no, I I'm not as bad as I think some people, but it mm. is something that I definitely indulge you on crave. way too much. Oh, I crave it so hard. Yeah. <laughs> and I really have to like like channel in a piece to like not yeah. follow through with it. And most times I do follow through with it mm. and I just eat a dessert. <laughs> well, you know what? If you if you can do that and still you feel fine, it's good. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, what makes you laugh? Oh, um, my brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what makes you angry? Do you mean like really angry or? I didn't think about this question. Then, <laughs> <do you? laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. For me, for example, like uh, I would say slow walkers. Yeah. Slow. I'm a fast walker. Yeah. And I can't deal with. And, slow I mean, walkers. like if you're slow. A slow walker, just like move yourself to an appropriate and area. That's it. No, but if you're going like you like there are hundreds of people just yeah. g- g- came out of this train yeah. and you're just reading and walking like right in the mm. middle of a tunnel. I just I'm not a violent person, no. but sometimes I have some scenes. In yeah, my head, like, of course. Yeah, <laughs> it's very, very it's enraging. Very triggering. I agree. Do you have any nicknames? Um, my mom calls me Beans. <laughs> Um, and Dustin calls me oiny. <laughs> I think that's it. My in school, my my friends used to call me Ain or Amy. Mm-hmm. Um, that's yeah. not nice. No, it's fine. I got used to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, beans or oiny. All right. Uh, what dish do you cook best? Oh god, I'm a terrible cook. Um, no, there should be something. There is. Um, which you know what's actually really annoying is that I used to be really good at making red lentil dal, but I feel like I've actually gotten bad at it again. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how that's possible because I was really good at making it and I don't know what's changed, but now suddenly I make it and it's not very good. And too then Dustin cocky. will make co- I think the com- cocky, yeah, yeah, way too much confidence. Because now Dustin will make it and it's really good. And then I'll try and it's like, oh, how do I fix this? Um but um other than that, I would just say like Tomato pasta, mm-hmm. I can make really good because Dustin taught me how to yeah. make it really good. Nice. He is the cook and right. I am the eater. All right, next question. Your favorite character in any kind of book game uh, screen play? Uh, probably Rapunzel from Tangled, mm. I think. I love that film. I love her. She's so fun. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Star Wars or The Lord of the Rings? The Lord of the Rings. Finally! Of course! <laughs> Finally, someone. Yes. You're, you're the first one. Really? Yes. That's insane to me. I because agree. it's just a no brainer. Of course, yes. Oh, thank God. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was going crazy. Yeah. But no. <laughs> you're not. Uh, any unexpected talents? I used to do this weird thing with my eyes where I just can blink like individually but oh, right. like really well yeah. and I put like I don't know if that's weird or not but when I was younger people used to say that was mm-hmm. really weird mm-hmm. because I had really yeah. good um uh how do you say it when they're like separation of like my eyelids mm-hmm. I guess yeah, yeah. all right okay. yeah. can you still do it <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> all right uh when was the last time you cried um oh good question um i think the last time i cried was the morning of the first day of our film shoot mm. <laughs> on the phone to my boyfriend <laughs> because i was overwhelmed <laughs> yeah but i do cry a lot yeah i would say i think that's the last time i cried so maybe like two weeks ago how can people reach you if they want to work with you mm. Probably Instagram is the best. I don't. I think that's the only thing I really. No creepy messages. No creepy messages. If you want me to answer you, say something legit mm-hmm. or say something funny because I'll always reply to someone if they've said something that's really funny. What if, what if it's funny but inappropriate? Not inappropriate. But like, because... what, but what, like you, you think like, oh my god, this is really inappropriate, but god, it's really funny. I don't know because. I think if I find it funny, then it's probably not inappropriate. Okay. You know? I think that, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it would be. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's a chance for someone. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it would be to have to be inappropriate and also funny to me. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's not enable them. Yeah. Let's not enable you. Um, But Instagram is, I think, the only thing I really like use. Okay. Okay, You'll find here. Yeah. Uh, and the final thing is something that I asked you yesterday. One cool thing. Is there anything that you like? Is there anything that you think our viewers should give it? Give yes. It? It's a band. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to see them last night. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw them as well, like two years ago on my birthday. Best birthday ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a band called The Scratch. Mm-hmm. And they're an uh, Irish rock band i guess but they have a lot of like um they they 
play mainly like acoustic instruments so like mm-hmm. acoustic guitar and i think the drummer only plays like a cajon or something mm-hmm. um and they're so good mm-hmm. and it's kind of like a really it's really they have a really interesting sound because it's like their it, it their stuff can be kind of heavy so mm-hmm. like i'm sure they have some like metal influences mm-hmm. as well um but then there's a lot of like traditional irish um influences in their music as well so like it's kind of like akin to a lot of like trad music um and they they managed to be able to to like have these like beautiful songs on an album and at the same time have absolutely mental songs and their mm-hmm. lyrics are really really funny mm-hmm. um quite vulgar but they're just so good and so fun and mm-hmm. if you ever can go to a scratch concert because it will be one of the funnest nights mm-hmm. ever okay uh you'll send me the link i will send you and the i'll link. put it in the description of the video yeah. where you will also be able to find onia's music videos uh and her channel and i think this is it this Look, is it thank you so much thank you and see you next time